There, that'll work, right? Right? Right. Howdy! Hello! Hey, everybody, and welcome to Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 600 and, uh, I don't know, I forget. Good to have you on the program today. Today is part one of the Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medan, a, uh, well, what has become a classic co-op horror hit from 19, I'm sorry, 2019. Uh, that said, it does have single-player content and a single-player story that we're all going to be enjoying today. I uh, played about, you know, 10-15 minutes of it to make sure it worked on my machine, and it's a gorgeous game. It's really beautiful, and it's pretty spooky, so I'm looking forward to it. Good to have everybody on Facebook today. Roman, Toby, Logan, Daniel, Jessica, Daniel Radley with the first uh, donation of stars of the day. Evening Ox, how's it going? It's going really well. I'm hot. I'm sweltering here in the Pacific Northwest right now. Don't have any AC in my room because I got that window open to vent all this smoke. But other than that, I'm doing okay. I come equipped with plenty of beverages to cool off. Cheers. <laughs> and Matthew Ryan says, hello, Oxy. How you doing? I'm doing very well. <laughs> so good to have you on the program today. And of course, it's wonderful to see all of the regulars and the members and the Patreon subscribers on YouTube today. Cliff Sains, Rachel, No Name, Alt Grindel, Automatic Beats, Fishkey, Adrian Parker, Craig Euler, Nick, Shadow787, Slam and Smitty, uh, Lane Berry, Edward J, Trevor Rob, Vince M, Matt Rowland, Obi-Wan Kenny, and Jocelyn Ryan with the first super chat of the day it says, Hello, Ox and Doll. Man of Medan is a good choice. Kind of sad you only got about half the lore of Mort Mortuary Assistant, but this is good too. Uh, so the problem with Mortuary Assistant is that... Um, you get all of the lore that the game has to offer, essentially, on your first playthrough until the very ending, right? There are five different endings to Mortuary Assistant, and it's possible to get absolutely everything um, in your first on your first day. Now, there were a couple of things that we didn't get. There's um, that keypad under the counter that we never really figured out, and that's because I never found the code to that. And then there are the medallions and... T and uh, tokens for going to Alcoholics Anonymous that we found in the cupboard that we could have used, actually. But we actually never got approached by the ghoul necessary to use those medallions either. So, you know, there are a couple of things that we missed out on just because we didn't go through all five nights of, um, of the game. Um, but once you beat one night, it just becomes really repetitive. It's a great game. I really enjoyed Mortuary Assistant. But uh, I didn't want to sit and essentially try and solve the exact same puzzle every week for five weeks just so that we could get the, the next ending. Which, and some of the endings are only slightly different from each other. So I got what I needed to from Mortuary Assistant. I'm pleased with the game and I'm ready to move on. No Name says the easiest time to add insult to injury is when you're signing somebody's, ca uh, somebody's cast. When you're signing somebody's cast, that... Is true. Uh, truer words were uh, uh, never spoken. Thank you for that one. No name. Adrian Parker says, Hey, Ox, hope the day went well. What are you smoking and drinking tonight? Cheers to you, good sir. I am smoking a La Aurora 1495. I am drinking some 12-year-old Glen Fittick. And I'm drinking some rum and Coke. Cheers. Toxic Sean says the old horn is live. Woohoo! Too bad I have to work. That's all right, Toxic Sean. The replay will be available online, ready for you when you're off work. <clears throat> Matt Rowland, or no, the Easy Life, says uh, Good evening, Ox. Good to catch a stream while the baby is with the grandparents. Haven't caught a Halo stream, so was wondering how you're liking it. Hope you and the family are doing well. Cheers. Thank you, The Easy Life. Well, we beat Halo Reach. We are now on uh, to um, Halo Combat Evolved, which was the first Halo game. And I'm really kind of being patient and waiting for the story to kick in. Um, Halo Reach was super combat focused. There were snippets of storyline. Mainly it was just 
vague bits of camaraderie between the different soldiers in the unit. Uh, we didn't really learn much about the universe and the Halo until the very end of the game, and I understand that it wasn't meant for players like me who were just now being introduced to the, to the, <laughs> to the Halo franchise. It was meant for players who played the first several games and were familiar with the lore and kind of wanted to live through and see this epic moment in Halo history that is referenced throughout the games. That novelty in and of itself is what made Reach popular. Uh, but for someone who's never been exposed to the story, you know, I, I felt like there wasn't much of it. In Combat Evolved, you know, they... they the, the remastered version, version has thrown a number of little terminal videos throughout each level to tell the story that the game is otherwise pretty much lacking. And that's okay, but what if you miss a terminal? Like what happened to me last week? There was a terminal in an elevator, and I missed it because I'm being chased by a bunch of underground space zombies, and I'm already over time, and my kids are knocking at my door because I gotta go, and, and it, I, I couldn't go back to watch the video, and so I missed out on the entire lore for that level because there was essentially nothing else there. Uh, that said, there are moments of tension and horror, and um, I'm intrigued by it. I'm intrigued enough by the plot and the setting of Halo to continue to play Halo CE and to move forward in the franchise. Vince M says, Hey Ox, hope you're doing well. Just wanted to provide an update regarding my schooling. Learning how to navigate my way around the Unreal Engine 5. Well, that's really exciting. Congratulations again on uh, uh, working on becoming a programmer, a game designer. I can't wait for you to really get your feet wet in the industry. Matt Rowland says, Ox, my schedule has shifted, so I'm not available to join you live during the day much anymore. And I miss you, but I'm here tonight. Cheers, my friend. Oh, Matt, that's so sweet. Uh, I miss you too, and I'm glad you were able to come by today. Uh, Chris McLaughlin says, uh, What brand of scotch and cigar are you enjoying tonight? I'm enjoying a La Aurora uh, 1495. I also have um, a backup, a Hoyo de Monterey, which is uh, a bit thinner. It's more like a cigarillo, but it's not. It's a, it's a legit hand-rolled cigar, but it's much smaller uh, than a, a Churchill-sized cigar. I'm drinking rum and coke and Glenfiddich scotch. No name says honestly may be the best pol po uh, honesty may be the best policy, but it's important to remember that apparently by elimination dishonesty is the second best policy. Yeah, I mean, but if there are only two, and dishonesty comes in second to honesty, that's not saying much for dishonesty. I would like to see what the other policies were that were up against dishonesty and honesty. That would be interesting. Julian Z says, Hi Ox, so good to see you on the Scotch and Smoke Rings. Did you see the new leaked photos? If not, I tweeted some at you, including one that may suggest Vault 32. That the vault is 32, not 33 like we thought. Play on, sir. Oh, dear lord. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't see him. Oh, there we go. Nice. There are the exercise bikes from the vault Tech Workshop DLC inside a vault. Love it. There's a nursery. Uh, they got the carpet wrong. Okay, I'm just getting finicky. <laughs> there's a tiny little carpet inside the nursery, and it's wrong. Because there are only there's only one nursery carpet in the Fallout universe. Right? And it's big and it's square and it's blue. It, they they kind of got it right, but it's it's rectangular and it's got too many, like, space designs on it. it it's, it's slightly wrong. I'm not... That's not that big of a deal. Whatever. They can get the little carpet wrong in the nursery and I'm not going to shed a tear. But they got the cribs and the, the furniture looks wrong. Wait a minute. That's not... That's not the right dresser. Hold on. Like, you get the rug wrong, fine. You get the dresser wrong. I mean, the furniture in the Fallout universe has a distinct style. It's post-apocalyptic um, uh, modern, I guess. But uh, that just looks like something you'd find on Craigslist today. In fact, that's probably how they found it. What's really interesting is that there's a bunch of age and wear inside the vault. Like, I see big rusty streaks smeared down the inside, which tells us that this is not 
pre-apocalypse or shortly post-apocalypse. This is likely decades, if not centuries, into the future after the apocalypse. For, for there to be that much amount of grime on the walls, which is interesting. All right, so we've got a bit of a farm in here. That's cool. Storage. I love, the, love how they did that. It's great. They really knocked out the inside interior of a vault. The modular look to a vault looks absolutely wonderful. They did a great job there. I'm not seeing anything that says 32. Is that a 32? Hmm. Wait, more pictures. All right, so this is uh, behind the scenes. Okay, there's another one. Oh, we've got some consoles. All right, they got the consoles wrong, too. The consoles look like um, our universe from the 1960s Cold War era, uh, even into the 1980s. It's lacking the really large displays and buttons and knobs that the consoles in the Fallout universe have because they're um, atomic punk. They're uh, googie in style. And this is very military, very hardware style, you know, a Cold War it's definitely got a Cold War style, which is not the style of the Fallout universe. And that's tragic. I say tragic. The outside, oh, they've got the vault Tech posters on the wall looking good. Love that. Okay, well, uh, I, I'm. all of these leaked photos just continue to intrigue me and thrill me. I'm really excited. Uh, so far, all of the little things, the little nitpicky things that I've been pointing out. I mean, the only person who would ever notice and care is me. So, so they're not that big of a deal. The car one really bothers me. The only one that really bothers me is that they don't have Fallout. Uh, oh, 32. It's an overseer badge. It says Vault 32. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there could be more than one vault. We could have seen grain bags for Vault 33 in our last episode, and then a Vault Seer's badge from Vault 32 in this one. That's really exciting stuff. Uh, all right. Uh, good to see everybody on Facebook. Matthew Bryan says, still playing Fallout 4. Hit level 40 and finally got my first suit of X01 power armor. Congratulations, Matthew. Where did you end up getting it? I think I did a, a video on a number of places where you can find an X01 suit of power armor. Uh, armor. Robin, with a donation of stars, says, hiya. Hey there, Robin. Matthew Bryan says, um, also tips for Halo CE. The pistol is one of the best pistols ever in the series. History between Chief and Cortana. Uh, yeah, uh, that's one of the things I learned really quickly when playing Halo CE is that the pistol is pretty much OP. And I've been using it religiously. It's a great little weapon. Uh, Jocelyn Ryan says, with a donation of stars, has Alone in the Dark been added to the list to check out? The reboot looks good, and the writer for Soma is involved. Alone in the dark. Two thousand and eight. Wow. I mean, it's got mostly negative recent reviews, and all reviews are mixed, so I don't know, maybe. Maybe I can check it out. Uh, Matthew Bryan says, The Chief was basically the best of the best. Cortana was given her choice of Spartans. She chose him. That's why they, that camaraderie between the two. They had been on quite a few missions prior to the game's setting, which is from the books. Yeah, um, so that's, that's another problem that I have because the very end of Halo Reach is the ship going away from Reach and towards... The Halo, and arriving at the Halo, and we come to believe that it was almost instantaneous that they sort of warped out of the orbit of Reach to arrive within the orbit of Halo, but they had just found Cortana on Reach. They had just retrieved Cortana from Reach as an alien AI technology, which means it's really kind of impossible for Cortana to have established this relationship and rapport with Master Chief in the time it took for them to jump between Reach and uh, the Halo. Um, but then again, maybe I'm just missing something of the plot. After all, I have not gone through the entire lore series yet.
Sorry, I had to answer a text. Jocelyn Ryan says, not the 2008, the reboot. Oh, there was a reboot? Alone in the Dark reboot? Uh, okay. Hasn't been released yet. Release date coming soon. Uh, a love letter to the 2008 Alone in the Dark. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, who knows? Uh, I'll have to take a look at it and see what the reviews are like when it actually comes out. Sarah Rieger says, thank you for the shout out last week while I was stuck at work. Made my day to watch the stream later. Cheers. Uh, cheers back at you, uh, Sarah Rieger. Hope you have a great day at work today and glad to have you on the program. Rachel says, what do you call a detective that just solves cases on accident? A sheer luck Holmes. <laughs> it's not often I hear a new one that I actually kind of like. So thank you for that one, Rachel. <clears throat> Please to meet you says if you had to live in a fictional setting and the options are steampunk dragons and goblins zombie apocalypse Mad Max or sleek and clean space exploration, which would it be? I mean either Mad Max or sleek and clean space exploration. I guess I would go sleek and clean if I had to choose one to live in. Greg on uh, YouTube says, Hey, Oxen Chat, excited for another Scotch and Smoke Rings stream tonight. Been loving the Halo streams, even if they aren't super lore heavy yet. And hope y'all are doing well. Cheers. Thank you, Greg. Hope you're doing well, too. Alt Grendel says, People have heard about Alan Turing, who broke the Nazi code during World War II, but no one remembers his sister, Kay, who provided food and drink to him and his crew. Kay Turing. Catering. Ugh. Oh, thank you all, Grandel, for that one. Sorry, I didn't mean to gloss over it at all. That was great. Adam M says catering. Why does the Normandy's um, navy? Oh, why does Normandy's Normandy's navy have barcodes on the sides, so they can Scandinavian? Why does N N Normandy's Norway's? Okay, that's why I'm confused. He spelled Norway, N-O-R-M-A-Y. That's okay, Adam. We've, I've got fat fingers, too. Why does Norway's Navy have barcode uh, barcodes on the sides so they can scan the Navy in? Scan the Navy in Scandinavian. Oh, that's great, Adam. Thank you. Scorpion Taz says, did you ever check out the American Rebel Cigars? Um, I don't recall um, the American Rebel Cigars, but I'll, I'll make a note to myself real quick. to check him out when I have a time. Nuttim says, for a while, Houdini would use a trap door in every single one of his shows. I guess you could say he was going through a stage. Ah, I love it. No name. I'm not drunk enough yet for this. Come on, give me a, st wait till the last half of the program for jokes like that. You want to throw a stage? Oh, Heather Buschek says the creepy baby is right above the donut man. Ah, creepy baby, the donut man. Is that like how your fan fiction begins, or something? I don't know. Or maybe that's the first stanza in a hit new song. The creepy baby is right above the donut man. Ah. I would listen to that. I like it. Rachel says, my cousin was hospitalized after swallowing 28 plastic toy horses. Doctors described his condition as stable. <laughs> it's not that good. Why am I 
I laughing? It's not that. <laughs> but I liked it. I, it's, I like the simplicity of it. That's great. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. KT Beaverhausen says freebie tonight. TGI Thursday, Madison soon. Well, you know, we're quickly getting through them. I've got Madison saved in a tab over here, and it looks interesting, so maybe we'll be tackling Madison in a mo. Uh, Michael Yang says, what JRPG are you willing to live stream if there is enough requests? Like, none? I mean, it would have to be old. It would have to, like, have the nostalgia factor of the PlayStation 1 from my childhood for me to consider it. Something like Chrono Cross, maybe, right? But there's, I just, I'm just not into JRPGs. Every time I think about playing one, I'll watch a trailer and instantly remember why I don't want to play them. Um, they're just not my thing. And you know what? They're, they, they're someone else's thing. And it's okay to have that kind of thing. I'm not thing shaming, but they're just not my thing. That's all. Julian Z says, oh, Ox, that's what I was hoping for. Love how not nitpicky you can get, even with the carpet and the furniture, lol. Keep it up. <laughs> also, some fear the nursery may mean they may uh, just be copying the intro to Fallout 3. Um, I, I wouldn't say that there's enough evidence for that. I mean, if they were copying the intro to Fallout 3, then, you know, we would have a carbon copy of a vault that we could use. Like, the nursery would look like the nursery from Fallout 3. Um, there would be the fenced-in area from Fallout 3. I mean, I suppose that's not strictly true, but it's also true that every single vault we have found in the Fallout universe, with few exceptions, has a nursery. So nurseries are part of the vault tile set in the Fallout universe, so it makes sense to have a nursery. Even Vault 114, which was famous for never being finished, had a nursery. So I don't think there's enough evidence to say that it's the telling the story of, of of Fallout 3. Especially since we already know the names of two vaults in the universe. Vault 33 and Vault 32. The Easy Life says, Halo 1 and 2 went through uh, development hell, which would amount to apocalyptic. The plot took a backseat due to extreme amounts of cut content and a massive shift in gameplay mechanics. Give it time, it'll grow on you. I hope so. Thank you, The Easy Life. Man of Warb says, Have... Having played through all Fallout games, what is your opinion on Fallout 4 giving you power armor in the first hour? Um, it doesn't bother me because, first of all, Nate, at least, has military training. And so we can explain away his ability to use it by, um, by that prerequisite. Like, he's already got the military training. It's a little bit diff difficult. It's a, it's a bit more complicated if you're playing Nora, but that's a different story. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I, w one of the things that I like most about power armor from the Fallout universe is the description that we get from the Brotherhood of Steel during the events of Fallout New Vegas, when they describe it as a vehicle that you can get into. And they even took the time to, like, correct this description. I, th I forget who it was. Maybe it was Elder McNamara who said, it's not a suit you put on. It's a vehicle you get into, which was counterintuitive at the time because clearly throughout all of the fallouts before that, it was a suit you put on, right? It had a similar icon to many of the other suits of armor, like the metal armor from Fallout 2. It, it you know, it, and it was like a one or two piece item that you just put over. Um, but the reason that they said that during the events of Fallout New Vegas was to explain the need for power armor training. It wasn't just a suit you put on. It was kind of like a vehicle, which is why you needed power armor training. Now, they removed that in Fallout 4, but they gave us the vehicle that you get into. It no longer looked like a suit you put on. I think they did a great job of fully realizing the way power armor was intended to look and feel by the original developers of Fallout at the expense of making it more common. And for a game where you've got raiders that can wear power armor and enemies that can wear power armor, that might have been necessary. One thing about Fallout 4 that 
um, I like is that power armor is not absolutely necessary. You can have a very viable build without power armor, though wearing power armor does kind of make you a bit OP. In Fallout 76, it's a bit different because there are extremely powerful builds that don't use power armor at all, and power armor becomes really not necessary at that point. Mark from Sales says, Loved Mortuary Assistant in the new Fallout 4 full story. Keep up the great work. Also, I heard about a new horror film inspired by Facebook. I liked what you did last summer. Uh, I like that. Nice. Wormy says, I got an IT job offer and start a uh, little over a week away. Thanks all for the well wishes the last few weeks. Excited and keep house to keep the house in services. I'm excited for that too, Wormy. Excited for you. I hope you get to keep your house and your internet connection. That's great. Congratulations on the IT job that you got, and I hope it all goes well. Vince M says, I heard the company that makes yardsticks won't be making them any longer. Cheers, he says. Thank you, Vince M. Another welcome addition to the collection. Rachel says, you think they'd get the crops right in the show? You think they'll get the crops right in the show? Ooh, good question. The mutated crops? Fascinating question. I don't know. Um, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we saw some crops in the most recent screenshots, but that could have been grass, not razor grain. So I don't know. Alt Grendel says, of all the games you've played on Scotch and Smoke Rings, which one has scared you the most? Probably Visage. Visage legitimately scared me. Um, Aliens, um, Alien Isolation was also really kind of, really thrilling and really kind of scary. But, but Visage was just horrifying. No Name says, what goes oh, oh, oh? Santa walking backwards. That, that could have potentially been, you know, not appropriate, no name, but I'm glad that we rescued that at the end there. What goes, oh, 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 it's Santa walking backwards. Thank you for that one, no name. Mal Mal says, just got here. Did we bring up ox body pillows? No, we did not. Thank you for doing that. Dan Z says, ox books will answer your Halo lore question. I know, but I'm a gamer and I'm trying to understand the lore of a game by playing the games. I like the fact that IPs can have expanded universes and all sorts of other canonical content from films and um, um, books and all of that, but I want to be able to get the majority of the story by actually playing the game as a game or if it's going to come out as a game. I'm fine for there to be you know, other really interesting things like new you know, races and cultures and clothing and songs and backstory about this and that that you get in the books and other things like that, but for the bulk of the plot, especially the plot of the game I'm actually playing, I want the game to be able to present that to me. I don't want to have to buy a book to explain to me the plot of the game that I'm playing, right? I'm not accusing Halo of doing that. I'm just saying that as we continue to play the Halo games, I'm really hoping that the plot becomes more readily available in the game itself. Freddie Simmons says, just watched your playthrough of Stray. Loved it. Would you ever consider playing Planescape Torment? <laughs> for scotch and smoke rings <laughs> or would that amount of required reading be a bit too much I'm just glad that it's somebody else recommending Planescape Torment at this point um I would uh, and I did and it's interesting so Planescape Torment is the kind of game that I personally would love. I'd enjoy it. I'd relish getting immersed in that world and have a wonderful time. But having watched the trailers for it, both the old version and the remastered version, I've decided that it's not a good game for me to live stream um, due to the nature of all that text and dialogue that you have to read for every single character and the slow, slow, slow pace of the combat. So I don't think I want to broadcast it, though I do think it's probably a great game. Jocelyn Ryan says, okay, compromise on the Oxhorn body pillow, make it smaller, and add a squeaker. It can be marked as a dog toy for the cats stinking, for the chats stinking wolves and dogs. I mean, essentially, you're just asking for an ox, an ox-shaped squeaky toy. 
That would be a wonderful idea. I love it. Richard Smith says, hear me out. Instead of an, why are you guys still talking about this? I don't get, instead of an Oxhorn body pillow, we get a life-size Oxhorn cardboard cutout. I, yeah, okay, sure. That's fine. I could try to sell a cardboard cutout. Big Steve says, what's your favorite open world game? Fallout, then Red Dead Redemption. Oh, okay, so I guess I would say, yeah, any of the Fallouts, then Red Dead Redemption 2, then, uh, I'm really enjoying Mad Max. I wouldn't necessarily call it as open as I would like. The Outer Worlds really wasn't an open world game. It was a game with open world zones that were loosely interconnected. Horizon Zero Dawn was really good. A really good uh, open world game. Jake Benz on Facebook says, Happy Thursday, Oxendall. Hey there, Jake. Good to see you. Matthew Ryan says, Most of my game I've played without power armor. I'm just taking it back to Sanctuary for one of my companions. My charisma is off the charts, though. I can almost guarantee that I'll pass them. This wolf will play with the Skooweeky toy. All right, well, uh, thank you for your enthusiasm, Matthew, and I hope your settlers get to enjoy your power armor. Jake Benz, with a donation of stars, says, A stinking chowder shirt would be a nice change of scenery from the body pillow. Yes, we can all talk about chowder and, you know, stinking wolves and all of that. Aurora says, I think an Oxhorn Derby hat chew toy for the pups would be rad. I'd get my dog one. All right, well, people love the squeaky toy idea. So thank you for that suggestion. I'll reach out to my merchandising team and see if we can get something like that working. Pleased to meet you with a super chat on YouTube says, in relation to Metro Exodus, in a real life scenario, do you think ceasing all external communications being a viable option to rebuild? Or do you think the nations would send spies to confirm that the country is destroyed? I mean, in a Metro <clears throat> Exodus like scenario, I think that most nations would be so obliterated that any form of um, structural government would be bare bones like they would be working really hard to survive and defend what they have would they be sophisticated enough to have a spy network i doubt it i think that's the sort of thing that would require them being much more advanced they would have had to recover more fully from that from the the apocalypse Slayer Gamer says, I've been watching your Mass Effect playthrough and did not know if you knew about the shifty looking cow. I did not know and do not know about a shifty looking cow. I'd love to be educated on that. Ian Chamberlain says, just saw the new Dragon Ball movie in theaters. Highly recommended. I hope you all have a great night. They made a Dragon Ball movie? Did somebody say Kamika, Kamiya, Kamiya or whatever it is? Or is it a Hadouken? No, is that the wrong one? Similar hair though, right? Something. Uh, yeah, I've, I watched a few episodes of Dragon Ball way back in the day, but it became a bit too much like a soap opera. Like you never knew who was marrying who and, and then whose kid ended up being from which. And then the Saiyan levels went from one to five to seven. And then the hair, just a variety of colors. It was a, it was a bit of a soap opera. And I kind of lost interest after that. Adam M. says she's really smart. She learned uh, to some of human knowledge in about an hour. They got to know each other on the trip to the planet. I see. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Adam M. And Rachel says, I also vote for an ox squeaker. <laughs> That's a great idea. All right. I'll have to leave a note to work on that.
Matt Rowland says, Ox, every week I Google search when Horizon Forbidden West is coming to the PC just because I want you to experience the next chapter so much. I want to, too. And rest assured, when it's available on the PC, I will dive right in. The Fancy Taco became a Silver Ox. Thank you very much, Fancy Taco. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, um, I just found out that there's a sale right now for uh, memberships on YouTube, there's like a 20% off. I think it's going right now and there's no expiration date. They're just sort of testing it. So if you ever wanted to become a member or you wanted to gift some memberships, now's a great time. It's 20% off. Mal Mal says, what about an Oxhorn body, body pillow wearing a vault suit? Just all sorts of bad there. Yeah, the body pillow is bad. Wearing skimpy clothes is just bad. Not happening, Mall Mall. Slayer Gamer says, There is a cow on Onteron that will steal your money if you look away. Really? I mean, I remember a planet we went to where there were a bunch of cow-like creatures that I killed, and the chat got upset with me because I killed them. I didn't know they actually stole your money. Quintayus gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Congratulations to everyone who got a free membership that was Graxian, David, Your Fake, Henrique, Bram Teo. Uh, thank you very much, Quintayus. JC says, after Fukushima, people in Oregon and Washington had traces of radiation in the air filters of their cars. Yeah, I remember reading about that. Man of Warb says, Shifty Looking Cow was an interactable cow on the planet Ontrom, which would steal your credits once you turned your back on it. Oh, interesting. I guess I'm glad I, I missed that. Greg gifted one Oxhorn membership to the community. Awesome. Thank you so much, Greg. And uh, I don't see who actually claimed it yet here on, on my end. But thank you very much, Greg. Oh, and it was uh, just claimed by Josh Burt. Congratulations, Josh Burt. Fishkey says, good evening, Ox. Great to see you. Any progress on an Ox logo? Also curious if the upcoming System Shock remake or Callista Protocol are on your radar. They are both on my radar, and uh, they both look really good. I'm considering it. As for the logo, I haven't sat down to try and work on it yet. I've been working on other designs right now, but uh, maybe I will in a bit. I just need some time. Moody Exorcist says, Hey Ox, first stream I could catch in a while. Can we get a smoke ship pretty please? Also, don't die in um, Man of Medan. Well, I'll try not to. A smoke ship, okay. This is going to be a smoke ship of a cow on the planet Ontram that's trying to steal my money. Here we go. There it is. We had a sneaky cow stealing money, painted in nothing but smoke. It was only on the screen for a brief moment, so I understand if you missed it. But trust me, it was there. Holly Phelps says, Hi, Ox. Just wanted to let you know Cortana isn't alien. She's a human-made AI clone of Dr. Halsey's brain. She was created on Reach, where she met Chief. No. I mean, no. Having played Halo Reach... We learned that um, the AI that was currently that being put together by Dr. Housley was of alien design. Um, it was um, former residents of Reach that had since gone extinct had left some of their technology behind, which is why, which was one of the reasons why uh, Earthlings had colonized Reach to begin with, and why that research station was there. Well, uh, Dr. Housley found this AI, which ended up being Cortana, and then gave it not to uh, Master Chief, but to um, Noble Six to take with him, right? And a Noble Six did indeed rescue Cortana before delivering it to the battleship, and it left for um, the Halo, right? So, I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just into Halo CE, and that's what I've put together so far. If there really is lore that contradicts everything that I just said, then they didn't really describe it well enough in the game. Father Mosgus says, what's your favorite Fallout lore? Uh, 
what's your favorite Fallout Ox? Love the streams. Thank you, Father Mosgus. Uh, I'm asked that question a lot, and I really don't uh, have an answer because I like them all the same, but in different ways and for different reasons. They're all great games. Fabrizio says, you accidentally ran over the cow. Popcorn. Long. Oh, did I? Is that what I did? I accidentally ran over the cow. That's why I never got pickpocketed. Um, Sarah Reacher says, uh, thoughts on what you're going to be for Halloween this year? Uh, I mean, I don't really dress up for Halloween anymore. I dress my kids up. They get really excited and they want to pick out their costumes. Incidentally, my son was Master Chief last year. <laughs> and he's never played Halo, right? He just loves the way Master Chief looks. So, and I had never played Halo at that point either, but, um, I typically don't dress up. The last time I dressed up, I think I dressed up as the woodsman from the Red Riding Hood tale. And um, my son was the wolf and my daughter was the grandma. It was really cute. But uh, I, uh, yeah, I haven't dressed up since then. And that was like eight, eight years ago, something like that. Austin Herbert became a bronze ox. Thank you, Austin. Steel 101 says, Love New Vegas, but the one thing that bothered me a bit was the lack of an explanation on why the courier was so powerful. I wanted to know who trained him. So, um, we learn from the Old World Blues DLC that there is something unique about the courier that happened when he took a slug from Benny in the brain. It did something to his brain. It altered it in such a way that um, it made him or her rather exceptional. Obviously, it didn't kill him, um, and it didn't you know, permanently make him dysfunctional, but the wound itself, the brain wound that he got from Benny kind of made him exceptional. However, we learned from Ulysses that he was exceptional before he got injured by Benny as well, which is, you know, but... Uh, but we also have to see it through Ulysses' strange brand of logic. <clears throat> he saw the courier as a world builder, a civilization builder. But all the courier did is deliver packages to the divide. Something that any number of other couriers could have done. And um, it was what happened to the divide due to a package that Courier 6 actually delivered that, so, that, that awed Ulysses. But we can't mistake that as, as the courier having these divine powers or supernatural powers that awed him. It was what he delivered that awed Ulysses. So I don't think he was powerful before he got shot in the head. I don't think there was any training necessarily that we know of <clears throat> that can explain how powerful he was. I think there was something that happened when he got that bullet in the head that made him or her exceptional. Cannabisure with a super chat says, good evening. Hope you and your family are doing good this week. Did you know there are 10 types of people in the world? Those who know binary and those who don't. Hey, loving that. Thank you for that one, Cannabisure. Freddie Simmons says, Every time I hear chowder, I'm reminded of the Simpsons episode, French waiter on waitress stand, chowder, Mayor Quimby's nephew. It's not chowdaya, it's chowda. Chowda, I'll kill you. See, I never saw that episode, but... I mean, leave it to the Simpsons. They've got a reference. There's a reference for anything that they've captured, right? There are so many episodes that you could just say something and suddenly it's a Simpsons reference. Kate says, ever smoke anything stronger than cigars? No, I never have. I have smoked tobacco pipes. I have smoked cigars. And that is the sum total of my uh, incineration enjoyment, I guess. KT Beaverhausen says, just a reminder to watch Tenacious, Tenacious D Post-Apocalypto on YouTube. It's an animated music series. It's very funny, and the tasty jams are fantastic. Okay, thank you very much. Big fan of Tenacious D, so I might have to check that out. Rachel says, I just like to picture the set the set dressers for, Fallout, for the Fallout show. Nervous, turning to one another saying, do you think this is good enough for Oxhorn? Should we leak a photo and check? <laughs> I doubt they even know who I, who I am. But uh, yeah, I mean, if they need, if they need a consult, if, if they would like a consultation, I, I can do it. Joshua Boyce says, Halsley created Cortana prior to the fall of Rage by several years. She was integrated with Chief well before Halo CE. Again, that goes contrary to what we actually learned from Halo Reach. We learned from Halo Reach that it was some sort of um, 
artifact from a prior organization. You can even go back through my live stream of that episode when Dr. Housley is giving her big speech to the Team Six about why they needed to end all of their current missions and go rescue her. She explained it's because she uncovered this artifact. Maybe she was lying. And the, the books are correct. But if that's the case, then I'll be even more pissed off. Edward Chapman says, hi, Ox. Hey there, Edward. So good to see you, my friend. Uh, Matthew Bryant says, can we get an Ox squeaky toy for Admiral? I mean, it's a great idea. I love it. I'll have to look into it. Not sure if it's possible. Um, Matthew says they have made a dragon, several Dragon Ball Z movies and a terrible live action one. Oh, have they really? Yikes. Kyle Warfield says logo idea. Scotch glass with rings of smoke above it. Now that's a logo. I love it. Zach Smith with, with a very generous donation of stars. Thank you, Zach Smith. Matthew Bryant says, also, now that I have some time to say more about what I've seen in your shop, you have about three designs available to be put on phone cases. was trying to point it out because I know you say you have all designs available, but I think some settings for your shop are not set right. Um, yeah, and I kind of just discovered this. Teespring, the company that I use to power my merchandise, they rebranded recently as Spring, and apparently they're going through a very difficult... Um, time and they had uh, something happen to their back end software which caused a lot of the products on my shop to be duplicated and then designs to get uh, sent to the wrong area so I know that my shop is a mess now uh, and I kind of got to go through and fix all of the little mistakes that they made I'm working on it but it's a, a big project and I haven't had a chance but I do want to have phone cases available for every design. Matthew Bryan says, Halo 4 will explain a bit about Cortana. The artifact wasn't Cortana. I see. But it looked like Cortana. So I look forward. So here's, here's the problem, guys. Look, if you're telling me something that's true, but they purposefully tried to make me think something else up until this point, then you're sharing a spoiler, right? Don't share spoilers. I'm, I'm new to this universe. I'm learning it as we go. Maybe they clarify what we really found on Reach later on, and I just haven't gotten to that point in the game, and I'm going off knowledge of the game as I've gotten to so far. If that's the case, you're, you're spoiling the story for me. Don't do that. Don't do that. And if it's not that, if it's the case that they really say one thing in a novel and another thing in the actual game, then that's also a problem, right? Because that would be a contradiction, and none of us like contradictions in our favorite IPs. Steel101 says, thanks, Ox. All great points about the courier. Still, it would have been nice if he came from the New Canaan or the Arroyo tribe. Sounds cool, right? It does, but I can tell you what they probably did. Um, they wanted to tell the story of the courier before the player gets our hands on him as uh, little as possible. And the reason for that is because after we get the courier, it's a completely different person. And any story about the courier's history could impact any role-playing stories that we've created for our courier, right? So the, bef they can't say anything that about how the courier was a good person or a bad person or a man or a woman or a young person or an old person because anything like that has implications towards the courier that we end up playing after Benny shoots him in the head. So, sure, they could have said something about him coming from New Canaan or Arroyo or anything like that, but all of that would have undermined our ability to tell the story of the character that we wanted to tell. And so they told, they said as little as they could. They said that he was a courier and he delivered packages, he or, he, he or she delivered packages to the Divide, and then that's it. They didn't tell us any more details about the courier because they didn't want to ruin our role-playing experience, which is what they should have done, right? They did the right thing there. Matthew Ryan says, you went out of order on the games, lol. Reach was built off of what was done in CE in the games afterwards. Matthew, like, I'm not going out of order. I'm going in the order that the games are listed in the Master Chief Collection, and I'm going through the canonical order of the games. Halo Reach is set 
canonically before the events of Halo CE. I realized that Halo Combat Evolved came out first and that Reach came out much later. But canonically, the storyline of Reach came before the storyline of CE. Therefore, anything that happens in Reach is canonical and needs to uphold or be upheld by the story of any future game. Otherwise, it's a contradiction. I'm not doing it wrong, guys. I'm not doing it wrong. I might have the lore wrong simply because I haven't been exposed to all of it yet. I haven't read all of the books and I haven't played all of the games yet, but I did play one and a half of the Halo games and I remember what I've played through and my knowledge of the experience is accurate right now as far as I can tell. Just saying, just saying. Rum. Greg says, as I'm sure you know, a lot of us who grew up with Halo are a passionate bunch. The best thing you can do is enjoy the games or not as they are. Yes! Or maybe I should just stop playing to spite everybody. No, I'm kidding. I would never do that, guys. Guys, I would never do that. I love you all. I'm not going to drop you like that. <laughs> I would never, I would never do that. Um, Adam M says, I could help with your store slash merch and the Ox body pillows. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. I've got some uh, some people that I'm working with. I'm going to get it taken care of. Mark from Sale says, yeah, but how did Reach get Chinese power armor? Man, just stop now. I'm done. <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> Matt Rowland says, this just proves why I avoid Halo, lol. It's not just Halo. I'm telling you, every... <laughs> <laughs> Every franchise has problem fans, has passionate fans, has contradictions, right? I mean, we learned this from the Fallout universe. We're learning this from the Halo universe. There's no game franchise that is perfect. No developer that is perfect. No game that got it completely right. And if we obsess over it too much, we're just going to drive ourselves crazy. We really are. And we're going to make enemies out of people who think a little bit differently than we do. And that's not what we... We're all gamers. We're all playing the same games. We're all having a good time. I dislike all of the unnecessary strife and tribalism that can happen when you just like a game. It's so silly. So... It's not Halo. It's not the franchise. It's us. It's us gamers. This is what we do when we're passionate about something. Maybe a little bit too passionate about it. I do it too. Okay? I do it too. Fabrizio says, Hey, Popcorn. Did you ever play Pokemon back in the day? Did you ever have a favorite Pokemon creature? My favorite Porygon. Uh, my favorite is Porygon. He's not very popular, lol. I hate to admit that I'm, you know, that, that was a bit after my time. The whole Pokemon thing and the Digimon thing. Um, I was a young adult when that was really popular with the youngins. So I never did that. I never got into it. Or Yu-Gi-Oh. That was all before me. Like even SpongeBob came after I graduated high school. So I never really got into the whole SpongeBob thing. No Name says, wait, Reach had dolphin power armor. I, we're not, I'm, I'm not falling for it, guys. I'm, I'm not falling for it. Chris Mack says, read your chat, it's correct. But if it is correct, then they're misrepresenting the story in Halo Reach. They told me something wrong in Halo Reach, which is a bummer. If it's correct, and they told me something on purpose that was incorrect in Halo Reach, then... <laughs> then they, uh, uh, then you guys are spoiling it. You guys are causing spoilers, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, so as I'm just saying, don't give me spoilers. If don't tell me something already knowing that I have limited knowledge of the lore due to where I'm at in the game. That's just cruel. Don't be cruel guys. I'm your Oxhorn. Be nice to me. Uh, Toby Noble says, Hey Oxhorn, when are we going to see a Christmas for geeks album follow up? Toby. Oh man, that's going way back there. He's talking about an old um, album, a Christmas album I released years ago. Uh, it was called Oxhorn's Christmas for Geeks. I think it's still available on like iTunes and stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd love to do another one someday. Maybe I'll figure out the best way to go about it. That was a lot of fun. One cooler guy with a very generous super chat 
says, um, greetings, Ox. Glad to finally catch a stream. I would say I hope that the chat doesn't send you to Batty, but it seems like they've already... <laughs> It seems like they're already getting there. Here's here's to a nice time. No, it's the the chats. I love my chat. I got such great people here. What are you talking about? I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting too batty <laughs> at all. Um, thank you, a cooler guy with a very generous super super chat. Very very kind. Adam M says next series Zelda. Their fans are great. I believe you. I believe you. I, I, Jocelyn Ryan says Ox the My Little Pony friendship is magic. Lore is accurate all the way through. Just. <laughs> Just no, just no. <laughs> I can't even do JRPGs. What makes you think I'm gonna be able to handle My Little Ponies? I just, I just can't. Matt Rowland says, "So Ox, what you're saying is Mass Effect is ten times better than Halo? I knew it. Ox, you're the best. Hashtag Mass Effect tribalism. Oh God, when can we start playing this game? I'm so done." <laughs> Ant, a member for three months, and a silver ox says, don't listen, they spoil in it, lol. Play on, good sir. Thank you, Ant. I will play on. Robin, with a donation of stars on Facebook, says, also, it's Halo. No one cares. It's not like it's Fallout. Ooh! Ooh! Ouch, Robin! I'm sure some Halo fans in the chat are going to get pissed about that. But, I mean, you're right. It's not like it's Fallout. <laughs> it's, it's Halo. <laughs> I love, I'm like, I love Halo, guys. I'm so, I'm so into Halo. I'm, this isn't about Fallout versus Halo at all, or Mass Effect versus Halo at all. So we don't need to go there, guys. Steel101 says, I see your point, Ox. It's just that the other Fallout games have a brief background story on the protagonist. I kind of wanted that for the Courier. I mean, they don't. Like, <laughs> the first Fallout gives us nothing about the protagonist. We arrive with the vault with the overseer just telling us the urgent need of the vault and sending us out into the wasteland we know literally nothing about about our character and fallout 2 the only background we get on the chosen one is that we are the chosen one we are descended from the original vault dweller that's the only backstory we get we are we're, we're not told if we're good bad male female nothing we go through the trials of the temple of arroyo we become the chosen one that's it we're related to the first guy and that's that's the only story that we get the change happens with fallout th uh, 3 i mean in fallout tactics it's the exact same way we get no story on um on any of the characters there in fallout 3 we get the story but that's only because we're living through it we start the game when we're born for crying out loud now the the part of time where we don't understand who we are is the lone wanderer's childhood but even then we have a brief moment of time during a 10th a 10th birthday party to kind of show who the lone wanderer is by making some certain choices right so even then we kind of have an ability to play the character's childhood then during the test, the goat test, we can play the character's childhood. So we we still have an opportunity to decide who that character is going to be from the very beginning. It's really when Fallout 4 comes out that we've got this entire life lived that we have very little control over. And I have to say that the Fallout 4 protagonist, you have the least amount of control over who that person is than in any of the, fa the other Fallouts. And I think that's due to the four option Mass Effect style dialogue tree that we get where everything is pre-recorded and there's a pre-recorded uh, Soul Survivor voice. I'm not saying that I dislike that. I actually kind of like it. I think the voice acting adds a lot to the game and flushes out the character, but it also takes a lot of the, takes away a lot of the player's agency, right? I mean, if you wanted a character with a lisp or with a gravelly voice or with any other kind of characteristic, you lose that with a voiced protagonist, which is one of the th reasons they, they, they went away from that during the events of Fallout 76, right? I think they came to regret that decision. Though, I mean, I still kind of like having Fallout 4 have that as well. But, but you're right that Fallout 4, we get more lore about what the soul survivor did before we get our hands on the character. I mean, even at the very beginning of the of the episode, we're a husband or a wife, and we have fathered or given birth to a child, and that child was likely conceived in a park uh, a year ago, right? So it's a lot of things have happened that we don't have control over. But even then, with all of that said, they don't tell us the whole story. Yes, Nate was in the military, and yes, Nora was a lawyer, but where the colleges they went to, who their friends were, what their beliefs are, all of that is still left to the player. 
And that I think is important for a good role-playing game. All right, I think I'm over, uh, over time here. Yeah, we need to start the game here soon. DJ Evisceration says, Like many, my fondest memory of Halo was the many hours doing big multiplayer LAN parties with friends. Ox, when you were younger, did you have a multiplayer game that gathered friends for hours of gaming? Yeah, it was StarCraft 1. StarCraft 1 and Brood War and uh, Diablo 1 were, and, and Warcraft 3, I think it was, were the games that my group of friends all played when we did our LAN parties. It was, uh, it was so much fun. And th the newer generations are never going to have that experience. Zarteth says, this super chat applies downforce to fast-moving vehicles. Well, thank you for that. I'm sure the fast-moving vehicles definitely need it. Uh, uh, Nick Valentine says, my recommendation for a game is Mars War Logs, a bit older cyberpunk RPG with crafting and looting. It didn't score well, but I like it. Mars War Logs. Definitely something to look up for later. 2013, all right. All right, folks, it's time to start the game. Let's fire that up. All right, we've got the lights out. No Name says, every time my friends and I did LAN parties, one of them would send adult pictures to the group. They called it a prank. I believe they had a problem. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. That sounds like someone who had a problem, uh, something they would do. Adam M. gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. That's awesome. And they have yet to be claimed. I think it's, it's getting to the point where the community is, uh, it, well, there are so many members here. Thank you, Adam M., for your generosity. Zarteth says, my previous super chat was a spoiler. Oh, did I miss a previous super chat? Zarteth. Oh, the one about deploying downward force to fast-moving vehicles? Oh, okay. I guess I'll understand it when I get there. Uh, yeah, still looks like those five memberships have yet to be claimed. So if you're watching the broadcast and you're not a member, go ahead and snag that in the chat if you can. All right, they're starting to come in. Congratulations to Look Up, Lloyd J. Stubbs, Dustin Lead, Fudge Knuckle. Looks like there's one more that uh, can be claimed. Thank you very much, Adam M., for your generosity there. And Osmium, Osmium, got the last uh, Oxhorn membership. Very cool. Wow. 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 I'm probably going to have to play this again, won't I? Or buy it again, won't I? Someone's going to steal the product key. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, play alone.
New story. Ah, uh, theatrical cut. Here we go. Man of Madame. All right, so World War II. All righty, Buster. We better mosey on back to the ship. Oh, wow. That accent. Whoa. Stop the presses. What? Looks like old Charlie Charming's got a little business to attend to. All right, Buster. We got a mosey. Can you fight? Can I fight? Hey, give me a quarter. Why? I'm gonna find out my future. Let's have it. What's in store for me, Pop? Have you got a question to ask the tiles? Brent Buss says, Ox Lamau, the guy talking about spoilers, was talking about parts for a car. It's the wing-like part that goes on the trunk back of a car. Spoilers. All oh, right, yeah, like the spoiler of a car. He was talking about spoilers. Okay. So, just to be clear, you can talk about spoilers as long as they're not spoilers, right? If the spoiler you're talking about is a spoiler, that's strictly off limits. But I don't want people to walk away thinking that I got something against spoilers. I don't. I like spoilers. I've always liked spoilers. I don't have one on my car, but if I had a race car, I would have a spoiler. But a spoiler with spoilers is where I draw the line. Have we made that clear? Okay. Okay, so let's see. Um, will I be rich or tell me about my son? Let's learn about the kid. Uh, I guess I just want to know about my son. Will he, uh, is he going to grow up all right? Are things going to work out for him? Dragon tile or bamboo tile. Um. <clears throat> okay, well, I guess if I choose dragon, that's going to be like danger and death and war and stuff. And bamboo is like uh, riches. Let's go bamboo. Look at the tile. Tell me what you see. Press and hold to pick up objects. Use the mouse to examine. I see it a fish. A salmon. Looks like a fish? Yeah, it looks like a salmon. That's good, right? Salmon is like wealth or something. Your fortune may come from any direction. Like a mysterious wind. But when a wind like this may blow, death and doom are sure to follow. Death? Wait, what? Did we what does that wrong? mean? Hey, what does that mean? What the hell, man? Hey, bud. Let me get a go at it. Oh, yeah? Think you got the stuff? You can get your friends better than you, Fight? That's a sure. creepy lady. Let me another quarter. I'm gonna start a tab. That lady's got a creepy smile. I'll give it a whirl. All right, so combat basics. Uh, mouse to aim, left to punch. <laughs>
Oh. Okay, so I'm avoiding things now. Hey, come on, I did all right. Was cheap. That was too fast. Hey, Chuck, we better get back to the ship. We don't want to get stranded. Come on, man, just let me ask another question. We really need to get back. Traits updated. What is this? Altruistic, insecure, selfish, reckless? Can I click on these? No. His eyes move when I drag my mouse. Pictures locked. Bearings. All right, so what does this mean, I guess? All right, back on board. Cargo hold two! These are all bodies, right? like this this game was written by somebody who was who didn't know anything about America but was said I want you to write a story about American servicemen during World War II and go and they're like uh, all right let me let me look at all of the worst movies and stereotypes that I've seen and put that into a game <laughs> the accents alone are just hilarious boy howdy we best be getting back to the ship now Why does it keep showing us the coffins? Whoa, what? We got zombies? Oh no, they're oozing goo. Oh, the zombies are oozing goo. Oh, what does this mean? Most of the coffins. Well, then what were the other crates? Some sort of chemical, maybe. Sick Bay, 1.36 a.m. June 22nd. Oh, 
All right, I'm in charge. By the way, I think uh, this was developed by the same developers who did the quarry, which is one of the reasons why I'm playing it. Slayer Gamer says, Ox, if you haven't played this before, Dead Space would be great for a spooky month playthrough. Yeah, I want to, and I'm waiting for the remastered version before I play it. All right, so lightning hits the ship and strikes whatever they're, they were carrying in those pine crates filled with the, the skull symbol on top of them. At first, I thought they were bodies, but no, those were draped with the American flag. But whatever was in those crates leaked out and started to ooze towards the coffins. Two pop, come back soon. Fixed cameras. Uh. Oh! What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. It's not that funny. It's supposed to be scary. All right, so we got some coins and a key. Should I inspect the corpse? Looks like I can't do anything. So who is this guy? The guy who sedated him? What the hell? Alright, that's it for the sick bay. Oh, that's what I needed. I was locked in. Uh, okay, so a hallway down there and a hallway over here leads to a door. That's a dead end. Okay, down the hallway. Right or left? Uh, right? Can't go right. <laughs> Let's go left. <laughs> then we turn right. Here we go. Is he still drunk? He's sort of just lumbering around. Howdy, Charlie. How's your time off? Oh, just get me out of here already. What the hell's going on up there? I heard aircraft and gunfire. Me too. And there was a... a corpse. What? In the sick bay. Something's wrong. Let's get out of here. Okay, well, let's explore your cell first. Um, Monday, Arthur Miller, private, petty theft, one day brig, small items belonging to senior officer found in Miller's locker, items recovered and returned to owner. Wednesday, Davis, David Davis, who names your kid David if your last name is Davis? David Davis? What kind of parents would do that? Private, trespass two days brig, found off limits in cargo hold 3A, with no reason to be there. Flagrant disregard for orders. Friday, Private First Class Lewis Brand Public Intoxication One Day Brig found drunk and acting inappropriately for U.S. Army personnel while on shore leave. Robert Reed Public Intoxication One Day Brig found drunk and acting inappropriately for U.S. Army personnel while on shore leave. So that must be us, Lewis Brand and Robert Reed. Saturday, Charles Anderson, Private Public Intoxication, that's a lot of drunk uh, soldiers. Public intoxication, 10 days in brig. Joseph Roberts, public intoxication and brawling, 10 days in brig. Assigned to sick bay for medical treatment prior to internment. All right, so we're Joseph. Our friend is Charles, Charlie and Joseph. Oh, is that blood on the wall? Whoa. What is that doing here? This is the brig. What happened to the other guys who were in the brig?
creepy placement of the camera, not very helpful at all. In the private Charles Ander in that private Charles Anderson on leave from duty did display intoxication in a manner not becoming of a member of the US Army, Private Anderson was engaging with another soldier in a drunken argument. It is the opinion of the arresting officer that this would lead to a public brawl, and steps were taken to ensure that both men were returned to their ship. I mean, it was on the ship. Brig 10 days approved. It was already on the ship, and it wouldn't have led to a public brawl. But oh, uh, whatever. Hey, we got a safe. Okay, so we need to find a key. <laughs> Press S in time with the heartbeats. What? Oh, no. I got this. So did that uh, green mist kind of make people go crazy? We came from here, right? Got a mist. What was that? Was that a kid on a battleship? these lockers. Nothing in the lockers. Hey, Charlie, help. In that song. Yeah, brother, you said it. This is Fubar. <laughs> Did they say Fubar back then? <laughs> I can't wait to write home to my mammy about this. Ooh, it's coming from there. God damn, another stick? 
Who's the lucky winner? Oh, damn it, Buckley. Last time I saw him in the mess hall, he was fit as a fiddle. Poor fucker. Oh, Buckley, you were fit as a fiddle. Am I supposed to do something? I couldn't go for the dog tags, I tried. My chat is telling me to go back for the dog tags. I tried. When we were examining the body, I tried to get the dog tags, but it didn't seem to work. I'll try again. I was dragging and not clicking. Let's uh, try clicking this time. Yeah, nothing I can do. Shinsef says that Wikipedia says that Fubar started in World War II. Okay, I guess they did their research. It must have been a trendy lingo at that time. shift to walk faster. All right. Hold on a second. I got to explore this uh, side passage. It's done here. Why do I have a feeling that I'm going to be coming back to explore the ship later in the game? Which might make sense why they made all of these side passages. So, uh, is it just me? Or are you getting a real strange feeling right now? Do I look like a guy who likes to talk about his feelings? <laughs> you look like a mess on wheels, Chuck. I ain't the only one. Great. Good company. Let's just get up on deck. Yeah. Fine. Agree. Yeah. We find two bodies. Sarge run bu runs by, shooting his gun, and he's like, hmm, I wonder if I have a bad feeling. And what does the big, tough World War II American say? He says, do I look like the kind of guy who talks about his feelings? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, this is going to be humorous for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> hey, Chuck? You see that kid over there? Uh... No? You feeling all right? How many times are they going to do that to me? Come on. <laughs> no Name says Snafu is my favorite. Is it? I didn't even know that Snafu was an acronym. I guess now that I think about it, it has to be. Uh, seriously not effed up? Snafu? But that doesn't make sense. Uh, what does Snafu stand for? That Colin guy says, Evening, Ox. Good to catch scotch and smoke rings, but looking forward to another Halo Monday. Fun times with The Flood. Can't wait for Halo 2. The best game in the series. I'm excited, too. Clull Big says, I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, I know. I, I bet this is the kind of game where they're going to have that line in here somewhere. Charlie, get over here!
Laughter? Charlie! Where's Charlie? Where's Charlie? How did he get ahead of us? What? Oh God, no. He was... Charlie! Oh God, no. Not Charlie. <laughs> You're approaching me with a knife. Could you not? That was a killer intro. I love the music, but it probably got me demonetized. I'm gonna have to check to see if there's a streamer mode later. 
Hello. How is British? And welcome to my repository. Hey, Mozart. So is this like the fortune teller from, um... I am the curator. The quarry? The curator of stories. Stories of love and hate, greed and beauty, life and death. Stories such as this one. I'm here to record the story you choose to tell. You see, this tale is only part written, and the choices you make will complete it and determine whether the lives of those with whom you are interfering continue to flourish or whether they are <laughs> snuffed out oh great it's all on me you see we each make decisions according to our own moral compass and we have to live with those decisions or die by them but you shouldn't fear death it is after all inevitable it is the tax one pays for having lived and it comes eventually to everybody Still, none of us want for it to come too soon, do we? No, no. As in life, the actions you take matter. The choices you make will affect others. I'll be keeping a close eye on your progress. Okay. It's not my place to interfere, but I might be persuaded to offer the occasional hint. Hmm. Here's one for free. There are pictures in this world that can show you some possible futures like the tarot if you cards. can find them and study them they may just help you to make better decisions or should i say decisions that result in the outcomes you would prefer that's all for the moment we'll talk again soon enough we'll have the opportunity to account for all the actions that you've taken or whatever mess you've made <laughs> Oh man, I'm really into this so far. So yeah, uh, he, the curator is like the um, is like the fortune teller from the quarry. Jay King says, "Hey, Ox and friends, hope you're all are, are doing great." Small piece of wisdom I got from a game I played. I'm my next post. Uh, sage wisdom. Steel 101 says, um, "Hey, Ox, thanks again for the follow to Vegas and info earlier. <clears throat> Sorry for." Pardon me. Sorry for nagging you about the courier. I'm like Columbo. Small details bother me, lol. I didn't mind it at all. I love talking about the courier. J. King says, vengeance is for those who insist that they... Oh, here's the quote. In, in my next post. Okay. I thought you said that in my next post was the quote. No. Okay, here it is. Vengeance is for those who insist that they are owed something. Forgiveness, however, is for those who are substantial enough to move on. That is sage wisdom. Thank you very much, J. King. All right, uh, are we going to find a, uh, a streamer mode here? No. Right, guess I just got to uh, hope for the best. Right, so is this present day? Are these the grandchildren of the men who we saw die? Witty Brad, Alex's brother, innocent. Brad, Duke of Milan, French Polynesia. Present day. Duke of Milan, that's the ship. Motivated, Alex, Brad's brother, Julia's boyfriend, insecure. Think we got enough? If we run out, we can always call for backup. So, uh, look. I've never been down there before. Down? The water? Diving? Or maybe you could show me how the pros do it. Are you serious? Uh, yeah? I mean, are you serious you came out here without taking any lessons? Uh, uh -oh. Kinda, yeah. Is this how we're gonna get our first person killed? 
It's insecure, it's embarrassing, or resentful. I had to work. Let's try. I wanted to. I just didn't, I didn't have time, you know? I had to work all summer. Oh, uh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Whoa, careful. That dive cam is, like, super expensive. Look, bro, be cool. What? Julia and Conrad are, you know, how do I say it? Super fucking loaded? So? So don't sweat the little stuff, man. It's not cool. Don't make me regret letting you tag along. Yikes. Accusatory or uneasy. I'm not good with people. Hey, I was invited. Uh, tag along? Seriously? I thought I was invited. Julia wanted you to come along. <laughs> For real? Julia? Yeah, man. She wanted you to come. And I wanted her to see how cool you are, which you're not. So be cool. Capiche? Mm -hmm. All right, amigo. Calvary's almost here. Cool. Sorry I'm a little snappy. I'm just... We knew medical school would be stressful, you know? Total shocker. And man, the long distance thing with Julia, it's been rough. Cynical, it's been two weeks empathetic. It must be tough. Let's be empathetic. Yeah, I got you. It must be tough. No worries, man. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> yep. Right on cue. What? Conrad doesn't think we have enough beer. Ah, I guess I keep these in an undisclosed location. Yeah. Relationship updated. Okay, Conrad is eager, witty, envious, and truthful. Fliss, who's Fliss, Julia, and Alex? Brad and Fliss? View Brad's relationship with Fliss? Brad? Brad empathized with Alex. Brad was offended that he is considered a tag along. Alex accepted Brad's reasoning. Hey, so, uh, can I get your input on something? Yeah, what? Just, uh, kind of a big thing I'm trying to make a decision about. About finishing med school? No, but it's just kind of a big life choice, you know? How to know what's the right thing to do. You sure you're ready? Give it some thought. Consider all the permutations. Bearing updated, Brad told Alex to think things through. Okay, proposal. So is this about um, marrying Julia? Hey! Julia, Conrad's sister, Alex's girlfriend. Excited and reckless. Conrad, foolhardy, Julia's brother, relaxed. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Connie, this is Alex. Hey, what's up, man? Conrad. <laughs> Watch it, sis. Lady killer, right here. <laughs> Good to finally meet you, Conrad. This is Brad, by the way, my little bro. Hey. Bradley, I feel like I already know you. I've heard so much about you. Yeah, uh, likewise. Miss me. Hey, man. Want to crack a cold one with me? Every second. Huh. Uh, that's a lot of seconds, cowboy. I mean, I would have gone with minutes. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Oh. yeah cool. Tight. <laughs> Tight. Uh, I, I love beer. Tight. I love beer. <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh, this poor guy. Truthful, eager, relaxed, envious. <laughs> Tight, man. I love beer. Who says that? <laughs> <laughs> right on, Bradical. I like the cut of your ship. It's Jib. Jib. Don't ruin it. Radical. You ever do any diving before? Um, no, actually. Never done it before. Water virgin. Nice. Hey, we're gonna pop your cherry together. Oh. I already really dislike this guy. Ugh. Maybe gentle. Uh. Ah, how do you respond to that? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the old crust bucket skipper anyhow? There she is, impatient Fliss. I'd invite you to make yourselves at home, but... Uh... So is everybody on board and ready to go? 
man, he's so confused. His view about masculinity is shattered. The crust bucket sailor is a woman. No, <laughs> his world is upside down. No Name says, don't judge. I said that last Saturday. Tight. I love beer. Man, I'm going to be saying that every time I crack open a cold one. Mmm, tight. I love beer. Uh, you're selling. I'm buying. KT Beaverhausen says, listen for voice actors you recognize from the quarry. All right, will do. <laughs> oh, Brad. Oh, poor guy. That's it. Get it all out. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you uh, want to go lie down? Yeah. You know, maybe I should. Oh, boy. Those hot pecs or hot pits? What about over here? That's pretty far out of the way. I'm just thinking about backup targets in case we don't find anything on the dive cam. Listen, to be honest, I've never heard of this wreck you're looking for. Usually these things are crawling with divers. Yeah. This one's different. Oh. I'm just saying, if it gets too late, I know some nice places where you can just take, you know, a nice dive. Brad did his homework. If he says the wreck's here, it's here. <laughs> Okay, look, you're the client. I'm just saying we don't have unlimited daylight. I'm gonna go help Conrad and Julia with the camera. All right, so, so they're diving, looking for the wreck of uh, the ship that uh, got hit by lightning out at sea, what, 50 years ago, something like that? 60 years ago? What you got? Feast your eyes on this. Or not. Brad's calculations were right on the money. Always bet on Brad. Yeah, that kid's a whiz. We should thank him. Fliss, we found a plane. Yeah? Yeah, it looks like World War II. We are ready to dive. Uh, technically, we should call this in to port authorities as an unreported wreck. Well, technically. Are you sure you don't want to do this the right way? Wait, are you saying we shouldn't dive? The right way. Come on, what is this, kindergarten? I had to bring it up. If we just go down and take a look, who's gonna know? Fine. Mm. As long as you're quick. And don't touch anything. Wasn't that guy in Quantum Break? Oh, I just can't wait to be the first one down there. Can you imagine? Untouched? <sighs> we should be ready to get you guys in the water in a few. I'll set up the tanks. The boys will do the final checks. Take a look at the camera, see if you can find anything useful. Righto. Hey, maybe you should check on your bro. <laughs> Is he still vomiting? Oh, oh, I'm in control now. All right, let's go check on the bro. Hmm. I don't think might be a way in. There's a little gap in the tail. Take a look. Am I supposed to be seeing something? Am I supposed to be paying attention to this? Do I click on anything? Okay, now we're back here. Mm. 
<clears throat> Steel 101 says the only thing keeping me from diving is sharks. Yes, we should all watch Jaws before going for a dive. Let's see. All right. I turned it off. You know how to use that? Uh, no. Not really. You might want to just let it do its thing. Okay. Can I turn it back on? Can't. <laughs> Did I just ruin everything by turning off navigation? Can I turn it back on? No? Oh, crap. Hey. Felicite Dubois. Born October 3rd, 1983. 5'8", 120 pounds. Uh, brown eyes, brown hair. The in structure identified on the rear is authorized to conduct classes in the designate specialty as sanctioned by Dive Master Federation. This doesn't look kosher. Yeah, um... Uh, is that how you would word it? Is she faking her credentials? No name says, did you remember to get Loyal's detonator for the plane? Ah, oh, nice Fallout uh, New Vegas reference there. Can we talk to her about it? Hi. You know, we have rules out here for a reason. You guys gotta respect that. Uh, yeah, sorry about before. Everybody's just a little... We've been planning this whole thing for a while now. I get it. But there are rules and laws and customs. These rules are all pretty basic stuff. How much experience do you have with these kind of dives? How experienced are you? <laughs> Excuse me? I mean, I know what your fake credentials say, but I don't know the truth. Hey guys, tanks are ready. <laughs> are tanks you snooping around? You don't trust me? The fake certificate is only temporary. My old one expired and renewal out here is like extortion, okay? Hmm. This dive is supposed to bankroll the fees. But that's not exactly following the rules now, is it? So I guess that applies to all of us. For all you know, this could be a war grave. Disturbing it would be illegal and immoral. Fine. I get it. How much? How much what? How much money will it take for you to stop breathing down our necks? You... <laughs> this is not about the money. <laughs> you know what? I can't stop you. Just respect the rules down there. Don't do anything stupid that'll get my ass in trouble. Well, that conversation could have gone better. <laughs> All right. Can I go down there? I can. Picture. Huh. What am I looking at here? Premonition unlocked. Interesting. What's in the hatch? What's up? How you doing? I'm sorry, that brewski got the better of me. Hey, all part of the adventure. Sorry for putting a damper on things. No worries, dude. Take more than that just to screw up the trip. Just get some rest. Come back when you're feeling better. Ah, oh, my belly is a, in tumult because of that brewski. I shouldn't have had the brewski. Locked door, locked hatch. No body, that's good. I'm not sure Julia left anything on the mainland. Shroud of Innocence. 
Oh no, cologne, I guess, or perfume. All right, distinctive it's perfume. It's only smelled as good as it cost. At least it made her happy. A must read for anyone with an interest in the Salem Witch Trials of 1692. A.P. Davis, The Herald, Shroud of Innocence. By T.S. Hartley. Tight, man. I'll take another brewski. Okay, I think that's it for the cabin. We got the picture. Was there anything else over here? No. Just that. Okay, so this is the rebreather. Way cooler than a regular scuba setup. It takes all that CO2 that you'd normally just exhale into the water, and instead, it gets totally reused. Then it reduces decompression time on your way up. State of the art. Okay, O2 check done. Whoa, 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 eager beaver, you gotta check your O2 first. Thanks for sending me straight. Okay, you little clown fishes. I'm gonna go see what Fliss is up to. You behave, Connie. Uh, I'm gonna Looking be so game. annoyed by this game. Take the camera or let's take the camera. You're on camera, I'll take the wheels. Let's get a before photo. Cheers, yay. All right, kids, good to go. Just remember the rules, please. Maybe we can fire it up again tonight for our private post dive special. Are you gonna bring your bang stick? <laughs> that front cabin is gonna pop its portholes. Oh, come on! Oh, that front cabin, it's gonna pop its portholes. Oh yeah, let's pop those portholes, baby. <laughs> I'm barely containing it, guys. No Name says, I feel attacked by this game. This is how me and friends talk about brewskis. Beer is far out. <laughs> I know. Whoa, you good? More or less. Oh no! Sharks, no! Too bad Fliss is so tight. <laughs> she acts like we're going to ransack the plane. Hey, a souvenir would be cool. It's not like one tiny little thing would hurt anybody. I won't tell if you won't. <laughs> Not like they can scan the wreck every night at sundown. There. That sheep. That's gotta be it. Whoa. That is, like, way bigger than I thought. Damn. It's pretty intact, too. This is a fucking remarkable find. Let's swim around a little and find a way in. All right. Howdy, Captain. You fancy a pint with your second in command? You are not my second in command. Third in command. No. Fresh and eager cabin boy. <laughs> Still a no. Your well paying, dashingly handsome, seafaring client is requesting the pleasure of your company over a frosty amber liquid. Oh, oh sure. Why not? Sure. Why not? Brewskies! Pretty nice ride you got here. Where'd you get the cash? You know it's not polite to ask a lady about her money. Fair enough. I was just thinking about buying a boat myself and I thought maybe you'd like to point me in the right direction. It would be my singular pleasure to help you part with your money. Oh dear. Oh, don't touch it. Uh, you know on. what? I better spend some time keeping the Duke of Milan shipshape. 
Aye, aye. Okay, now we're controlling her. Uh, turn it back on. There we go. Weather looks clear. Okay, we got it back on. Looking good. Let's leave that on for now. She's just gonna go put that away for now. <laughs> All right, let's head under the cabin. Now, does the picture show us something different depending on who we're controlling? No. Can't go in there? How's it going? Knocked out by cold frosty. Man, I feel like such a wimp. Hey, it's your vacation. You're allowed to overdo it. I am officially starting a temperance club. Party of one. Lifetime membership. Hope the lovebirds are having the time of their lives down there. I hope they know what they're doing down there. Attitude matters 20 meters down. Alex plays the goof, but he was pretty serious about acing his diving certification. Are you close with your brother? <laughs> Known him my whole life. Julia's got Alex wrapped around her little finger. Huh. Gotta get back up top. Check you later. Check you later, Brewski. <clears throat> Steel 101 says, yo, beer is tur turbotacular, dude. Hang loose, my man. <laughs> hey, another painting! Yes! Oh, why do I keep these around? Yeah, good question. Right, uh, okay, so the exact same stuff. So is this just another opportunity to explore the cabin and find more stuff? More of the same stuff? Well, we did get access to the other painting. Hold on a second. Brad, you okay? Yes. <clears throat> okay, I thought I was standing on top of that hatch. There's another room right there, but I can't access it. Hello. Come on, let me read it. Uh, Felicity Dubois, account number blah blah blah. Dear Miss Dubois, this letter is a formal notification that you are in default of your obligation to make regular payments on your personal loan. The loan holds a remainder of $24,783 with a sum of $3,481 payable by the 1st of August 2019. This amount has been overdue since that date, and you appear to have ignored multiple requests for payment or a discussion to reconsolidate your debt. Unless the outstanding amount of 3481 is received by the 30th of August 2019, we will have no choice but to begin the foreclosure process against your collateral, namely the marine vessel, the Duke of Milan. Please act accordingly. Yours sincerely, Charles Coran, Senior Account Manager. Ooh. 
Dive Trip 5000, Hotel Tours 2400, Eddie's Fishing Trip 500, Sell Laptop 600, total for month 8500. Call Bank, cancel sell. Oh. Uh oh. Hey, Fliss. Look, there's a boat. What's that about? Pirates! That is not the Coast Guard. So we're not under arrest. How should we handle this? Uh, we are not doing anything. I'm the captain, so you be quiet and let me handle it. You got that? Uh oh. You gotta keep back, we've got divers in the water! Hey, we got damage here, you see this? Look at our boat! We can take care of this, man, it's not a problem. What do you think, like, uh, 10 bucks cover it? Oh, whoops, my bad, let's make it 20. Wow. Wow, really? Well, shoot, you, you think it's more like 30? I can wow. do 30. Dude, stop. All right, you guys drive a hard bargain, but I'm with oh you. Oh, my Here. God. Let's just throw in the whole pot. Yeah, you should have just shut your mouth, guy. No name says, look at me. I'm the captain now. Thank you, no name. Conrad said one of the pictures showed an opening. Conrad, really? Really? On the rear turret. Oh, huh. good on you, Connie. The turret, we can get in through there. Ooh, jagged metal. My reactions are gonna have to be swift. Be dangerous. Wow, I even saw it coming. I just uh, didn't know which button. First. Can I just take a second to say, holy shit, Alex, we did it. I mean, can you believe it? Oh. Premonition unlocked. She gets sick? Julia, leave it. You'd have to take your gear off to get in there. Not worth it. That pipe's pretty tight. What if you get stuck without your rebreather? Maybe it is kind of dangerous. Yeah, let's not uh, kill ourselves over that. I'm going to avoid every opportunity to die if I can help it. Ooh. Bullet. Is that what they look like, just stuck in the hole there? That doesn't make sense. You couldn't just pull a bullet out of the fuselage like that. Secret bullet found? holes all down the fuselage. Brad's gonna flip when he sees this. Well, she got her souvenir. But my character's gonna die from sepsis. Or an infection. Check it out. They reconfigured the bomb rack to hold lifeboats. Interesting. One of the rescue boats is missing. Think they were using it? Let's see what else we can find. Good 
God. something. Check it out. Hear that? Wanna go first? <laughs> ah, cheap piece of shit. Crap, I broke my knife! Ooh, he's got a gun. I wonder if it still works. Oh, that's freaked me out so much. I pressed escape. Oh, God. Of course, they got to throw it. Just an eel jump scare at us. Of course they do. No Name says, see, the quarry kids had a kind of charm. These people, though, I want something bad to happen. I know. I'm at a point now where I just want every single one of them to die. Except for maybe Brad. Pilot and co-pilot. Gotta be. Plane crash not high on my list of ways to perish. Easy now. This stuff's been down here a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's turn it, of course. <sighs> <sighs> What is she hoping to achieve? Just don't touch anything else, please. What is she hoping to achieve with that? Did she think she was going to fly it out of the ocean? Why? He's holding something. Oh, this is this again. Was there something on it that I missed last time? Out of here. You coming? We are leaving, right? No. What? Was there something I was supposed to do? I thought we were leaving. No. Okay. Uh, I guess there was something. Shark, not interested in us. Let's go. Yeah, but she did bleed. There's blood in the water now. Hold on. Uh, oh, okay. I, uh... What are you doing? Why are you fidgeting? Uh... I don't know, I, Are you gonna I ask her to marry wanted you? to bring something up with you, but it's it's not the best time. It's on your brain, buddy. Nothing. Nothing. Just he was gonna propose. kind of shaken up by a little brush with a gruesome and meaningless death. It doesn't matter. Let's get back up to the top. Jeez, Alex. 
You're more of a wreck than that plane that just literally fell apart on top of us. Give me a break, okay? Come on. We really gotta get up top. He was gonna propose to her. Cliff, this is Julia. We're coming back up. Over. But because Brad told her told him to think about it, he hesitated. Hey, where'd that other boat come from? Wait, Julia, we gotta decompress here. Whoa! Whoa. Damn! What the fuck? We gotta get up there. Wait, we have to decompress. Damn it. Yeah, okay. Decompress, right. Yeah, I don't want him to die from the bends. How long does it take to decompress? Oh my god, this is taking too long. This is torture. Just a few more seconds. Okay, now, go, go! Hey, what the hell is going on? What the hell happened? It's cool, man. Everything's all right now. <laughs> was this the grill? That was just the grill. There was a little uh, mishap with the barbecue. Okay. Jesus, looked like the whole boat was lit up. What was up with that other boat? These fishing guys came by and ran into the dive line. Whatever. Who cares, right? What I want to know is, what'd you guys find? Well, we found the plane. And it is huge. Full of cool stuff. Unfortunately, we did not leave it as pristine as we could have. What? Why? The dive line, actually. How bad? Uh, there's no cockpit anymore, for starters. God. Well, that's just fucking perfect. Okay, well, no one's dead. You're getting to know these intrepid adventurers then. Yeah, Alex and his little brother Brad, trying to swim with the big fish. Both seem out of their depth. And Julia, the love of Alex's life. And he, the love of hers. What about Conrad? A bold fellow, you might say. Or maybe you'd say arrogant. And then there's Captain Fliss. Strong, forthright, stubborn. She appears somewhat immune to Conrad's charms. So far, at least. Let me reassure you. You help them to make some decisions they'll value later on. You're doing well. I'll take it. All right, one second. Sorry, I do have a text I need to respond to. Right, sorry about that. How well preserved was the plane? Pretty much what you'd expect. Brad, it was insane. It was like traveling through time. No shit. Well, it was like traveling through time and accidentally ending up in a dimension where the past is underwater and like everything is covered in barnacles and sharks. Sharks? It was a gray reef. Ah. Hey, I thought it was pretty intense. Wasn't Conrad gonna get us some more beers after he helped Fliss? Maybe he decided, hey, I'll drink some, and then he got drunk. And since he was drunk, he forgot to bring it to us. And he just kept on drinking, and he drank all of it. Uh, sounds like you've had some experience with this kind of phenomenon. Yeah, <laughs> I've been studying it for years. I'll go look for him. Oh, we found a bullet lodged in the plane. Huh. I left it below deck if you want to check it out. Great. What are Conrad and Fliss up to? Hey there, polar bear. You good? Sorry, uh... I was just thinking about how crazy our dive was. 
Can you believe what we just got to experience? I expected it to be cool, but that was... That was, like, life-changing cool. What an adventure. I'm glad at least something on this trip will be memorable. Every trip we take together is memorable. You know, you're pretty much the best thing that ever happened to me. I love you, Alex. You know where everybody is? I'll go get them. Why don't you just chill out here? Hey, you seen my brother? Or Fliss? Uh, no, I uh, got distracted. Let's go get him. Sure. <laughs> so, which one is, uh, you know, where the magic happens? Oh my god, this guy. On behalf of my family, I'd like to apologize for my brother acting like a horny fifth grader. Ah, uh, it's okay. I can deal with children. Oh. Conrad, beers, where are they? Oh, yeah, the beers. I was just getting them now. Burn! Burn on you, Conrad! Not when your sister's around, buddy. All right, now that everybody's here, let's take a look at the navigator's pad we found. Maybe we can figure out why the plane was out here. Where'd you put it? It's in your case. Okay, I'll go get it. Hey. You all right? You seem kind of preoccupied. Nah, I'm good. Sorry. Didn't realize I was spacing out. So, does the accident mean we can't do any more diving? Let me just say this once more for the record. Going into that plane was super dangerous, obviously, and twice as... Air a Rescue day. Service. Okay. Now damage is done, so we uh, just fly about it. Conwyn Islands? Or else we're gonna go to jail. Conwyn Island, Air well, Rescue Service. My lips are safe. So, we're going again tomorrow? Sign me up. Can't wait to see this sucker for myself. Hey, got the pad yet? Sorry, I got distracted. No worries. Let's go get it. Wow, we've been trying to get this pad for <laughs> this entire time. Can't I flip through the pictures? Got it. Let's go up. Come here, you vixen. Oh, God. Easy, tiger. We should get back. Come right here, here, you vixen. Easy, tiger. It's like these people don't know what how relationships actually work. <laughs> Come here, you vixen. Let's <laughs> knock out all You'll the You'll get no balls. resistance there. All right, everyone. Check it out. Manchurian gold. Who wants to find some sunken treasure? So what do you think, Captain? Coordinates? Those are coordinates, all right. Maybe the plane's destination? You think we could get there by tomorrow? It takes a couple hours if the weather stays steady. <sighs> wow. You find anything else? This plane must have been shot down because it was riddled with bullet holes. I found one lodged in the fuselage. Huh. And it was full of life rafts. Must have gotten shot down before they could deliver all the rafts. There was only one missing. Reckless. All of you. Excuse me? I told you to leave everything down there alone. Oh, come on. We've been through this already. I'm not talking about the law. No, hey. They were respectful. No, you did whatever you wanted. Whatever you took, it was too much. You're right. We should have been more careful. That's not me, I'm sorry. Okay, maybe. I don't know you. You should have never gone down to that plane in the first place. It's bad luck. You think you can scavenge down there and it makes no difference, but every single thing you bring back has an essence. Uh -oh. It's like a ghost you invite to the surface. Here we go. Magic. Huh. I never thought about it like that. You never think about much of anything. Well, maybe I never heard about such cool ghost stories. They're not cool ghost stories. <laughs> not like for fun. People drown in these waters and you have to respect their resting place. Damn straight. Brad, you got a fun ghost story, right? Y yeah, I heard a story. It happened right around here, too. Let's hear it. We could all use a good show. Let's hear it. 
I bet you can spin a good yarn. It's kind of messed up, actually. <laughs> Scare away, little bro. Okay, here goes. This story is true. It had happened right near here, in an old lighthouse. Classic setup. Wait, true story? Where'd you hear this? If you need to know, it's ripped right from the rotting pages of the terrifying ancient in-flight magazine I was perusing on our way here. The lighthouse stood atop an atoll, isolated from the rest of the world, a lone beacon in the night, a sailor's respite. The lighthouse keeper would hear the waves pounding the rocky shore. One misty morning, he comes upon a woman covered in blood. She's stumbling down the beach. He hurries to her aid and she falls into his arms, sobbing. As he hurries her back to the lighthouse, he asks where she's from. He doesn't waste any time. Smooth. Shh. The woman answers, I live here in the lighthouse. My parents are upstairs right now. Twist. Of course, the lighthouse keeper says, that isn't so. Of course, he's lived there alone for years. And the woman becomes hysterical, and his sister parents are upstairs. So, they go to the top of the lighthouse, and there, splayed out on the floor, is a man and a woman brutally murdered with an axe. Always an axe? I mean, do people even use axes anymore? <laughs> I'm just reporting the facts, cliches and all. Chopped up into little tiny giblets with an axe. So gross. Okay. So, who did it? The woman says, it was my husband. And she turns to the closet, says, he's in there. Ah, yes, the husband. And that's why I've always been a little weary of marriage. Whoa. So the lighthouse keeper creeps over to the closet, opens the door, and sure enough, there's a man inside. But he's cut his own throat. With what? Horrified, he looks closer to see the dead man's face in the dark. Closer. Closer. And he sees? And he sees. It's his own I call face. It. I caught it! And then its eyes bulge out and screams. Ah! Ah! <laughs> so gross. Hey, well, super twist. Nice. <laughs> nice one, Squire. You have me going. Pretty cool. I think you told it better last time. But good effort. Okay. You've all had your fun. We should all turn in. There's some weather hitting our way. Uh-uh. No, no, no. No, because according to standard vessel regulation, we're all required. One more beer before hitting the hay. What regulations are these? Uh, it's standard issue regulatory institutional protocol subdivision 1099. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where'd you read that? The internet. Oh, so you found a website that tells you to drink beer under every circumstance. I'm just following orders, ma'am. <laughs> I'm into this website. <laughs> 10 good buddy. And I'm out. No Name says, so after watching these people, you're going to take back the mean things you say about Jacob in the quarry, right? I mean, I have to at this point. All of the mean things I said about Jacob, I mean, yeah, he kind of deserved deserved them at the time compared to all of the other characters in the story. But compared to Conrad in this game, holy cow, Conrad, I want to shoot him straight to the moon or something. He can suffer in space. Nobody heard them open the door like that. Great. Oh, come on, I got every single quick time event.
Flash your money around, see what happens. You moron. Conrad, this is all on you. Greg gifted one Oxhorn membership to the community. Thank you very much, Greg. And congratulations to whomever gets it. We haven't seen that just yet. What a time, though. Here we go. Hey, so, uh, good news, bad news. Bad news? I don't see how this could get any worse. The bad news is these are kind of maybe the fishermen I pissed off earlier. Oh, God damn it, Conrad. Great, just great. And the good news? Uh, I recognize them. How is that good news? I thought you were gonna ask the good news first. You're such an idiot, Jesus. Hey. Alex, what are they gonna do to us? What are they doing to I don't even wanna know. The captain. I wanna get out of here. I'm in a lot of danger. Guys, we gotta get untied, like now. <laughs> oh, shit, it's no good. I'll be back for you later. Conrad! Nobody knows you're out here, little lady. You're all alone with us now. Let's make the most of it. You can go fuck yourself, you piece of shit. You're the little lady. Congratulations to Exergzak, who got Greg's gifted membership. Thank you again, Greg. Be on your best behavior, little man. What happened to your head? Okay. Okay.
Oh, Jesus, Conrad. <sighs> yeah, I got beat up a bit. What happens when you're a smart Alec? Wait, wait, no! <gasps> Alex! Stop it! Let her go! You bastards! Hey. Dipstick. Shut the fuck up. I don't think they're gonna hit her. They haven't hit Fliss. Fliss sure seems to be getting buddy-buddy with him. Did you see my brother? No. But I'm, I'm sure he's fine. These guys probably just want money or something. All right. Turn around. Don't let them see your hands. Once we get Julia back, maybe we can take them by surprise. Okay, they're coming. Fuck, motherfuckers. Hey, hey, are you okay? What did they do to you? I'm fine, they didn't touch me. They asked about our parents. What? How much money they have. Now we just have to wait and see what they want to do with us. Oh, great. My least favorite thing. Miss Silver Fox donated 10 memberships to the community. Thank you, Miss Silver Fox. Now to wait and see who gets them. You can uh, opt in to receive gifted memberships from the chat box and then claim them as your own. No Name says, how does the boat not have a distress beacon? I mean, yeah, but maybe they were taken so su by surprise that no one had a chance to to make the distress beacon. Or maybe they're in an area where no one would respond to them. Who knows? Eight seconds. The storm's eight miles away. They came here on a boat. Maybe we can take it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a speedboat. The main guy here. He's got a gun. Well, at least one of us can get on their boat. Get some help. If you can distract him, I can get on that boat. The dude with the gun won't even realize until I'm long gone. Seven seconds. I can get out through the window. We gotta break these off first. Too loud. They'll hear it. We're gonna break them during the thunder. <sighs> Good call. I'll go through the window and get the boat. You guys, distract them. Conrad, just stay focused and get to the boat. Okay, let's do it. just uh, gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community and uh, congratulations to all the recipients 
Elliot Steele, Scottish Potato, Tristan Matic, Hubris One, uh, Dragon Horizon, Haiti Haiti, Jonathan Rodriguez, Tristan Lasley, and Apon Chiserex. Congratulations to all of you. I'm awful at this. I have missed all of my quick time events. Uh, 427 Kevin, a member for two months and a Silver Ox says, thanks for the membership. Uh, many thanks to the community for donating them. Sit down. Over there. You, right here. Sit. Now. Arrêtez, bande de cons! C'est mon bateau! Stop! Ferme-la, ou je te mets mon poing dans la gueule! Olsen! Come here! Which one of you is gonna tell me about this Manchurian goo? escaped when you had the chance. Yeah, I get it. All right, shut the fuck up! There is no harm in just talking. You wanna talk? Keep the volume down. I'm just gonna say it. Fliss has gotta be in on this. She and these guys, they travel in the same waters. She's a captain and they barely laid a hand on her? I bet you told them about the Manchurian gold. They're in cahoots! Whoops. Are you out of your mind? How did you come up with this bullshit? How fucking dare you, you overprivileged asshole? You're all in this together! This is a trap, and you set us yeah, up! Yeah, asshole! Put a cork in it! They are, they, are, they are absolutely not generous with these quick time events. Like, it's brutal. You miss it for just a millisecond and, and you're done. Sit still, all of you. You, come with me. Hey, leave her alone. <sighs> Find out how long the storm is gonna last. You try anything, anything fishy, and there be consequences. Get it? Duke of Milan requesting weather update. Over. Duke, we read you. Everything okay? Over. Hey, uh, just requesting any information about this storm you can give us? It's a little bit hairy out here. Over. Big storm coming in from the east. Gonna hit you pretty hard, but should pass through your coordinates within an hour. You sound a little stressed, Duke. Please let me know if you need assistance. Not used to a little weather freaking you out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. A-okay out here. We can handle a couple of puffs and drops of rain. Uh, thanks for the info. We'll see you for drinks back on shore in a couple of days.
how quick that quick time event was, right? They throw an S at me, and I get the S, but then they give me an A, and the A is like a fraction of a millisecond. Like, how am I even supposed to do that? This is just brutal. Oh. there than with these psychos. Oh yeah, great. He could get killed down there. Brad's a big boy. He'll be okay. And it's probably better for us if he stays put for now. still alive. Barely! God. Things could have been quite different. Okay. <sighs> Kind-hearted creature I am, I'd like to offer you some forewarning of what's to come. Yes, Tempted? please. Tempted? Yes, please. Thank you. I'll take it. Uh, 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 yes, yes. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> we will turn to the Bard for <clears throat> inspiration. The Merchant of Venice, Act 2, Scene 7. The Prince of Morocco pulls a scroll from the eye of a skull and reads, All that glisters is not gold. Often have you heard that told. Anyway, now that you've reached a point of significant distress, yes. I presume you're eager to get back to your story. I mean... But here's a thing. Everything may not be entirely as it seems. <sighs> Probably shouldn't have said that. Right. <clears throat> Okay, my hands are on the quick time buttons. We gotta miss a million of them right now. La porte! La porte! Vite! La porte! Uh, <laughs> Just stay where you're at. Don't go on, on the ghost ship. Retire la tête à l'image. What are you thinking? It's a freaking ghost ship! He's gonna die. He's gonna be the first one to die. Go! Why? Why are they doing this? What reason do they have to get on this ship? Why? This is like the 
people who go into the creepy basement in the creepy abandoned house in the horror movie. You cannot go in there. There are other places you can go, not the basement. Don't go in the murder basement. And what are these guys doing? They're going in the murder ghost ship because of course they are. Oh. <laughs> It bothers me more that they're all barefoot. <laughs> I didn't even see that until... You're right, they're all barefoot, and they're walking on rusty, corroded metal that's been sitting out at sea for 60 years. Probably not the best idea. This <laughs> Not all that glistens is gold? Does that mean I shouldn't check on these things? Probably don't want to awaken whatever's down there, guy. What's he thinking? Just reading the clipboard for crying out loud. This whole place is a floating death trap. Hey, hey. Oh, sorry, Junior. Sorry. Like, they know where we're going. Where do they think they're hurting us? We're all arriving at the same Keep ship. moving. At the same time. It's all Conrad's fault. If anyone dies, I hope it's him. <gasps> oh. But it's her special bracelet. up for a trip to creep down. Something about this place is making my hair stick up so far it's gonna jump out of my neck. Yeah, I wonder what that could be. Oh look, the masks of madness. You, do you dare to look death in the eye now showing in the mess hall? Crucifix that was used. Miller. Move. Right, right, right. Just chill out, dude. Not all that glistens is gold. Get back. Oh, shit. It's a one-way trip. If I miss anything, I miss it. What the hell do these dickheads want with us? Ah, oh, man! What was that? Did you find anything? No? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. How are there rats still alive on a ship that's been out to sea for like 60 years? How, I mean, even if they ate all of the human bodies, it, a year maybe. To Private O'Neill, you're covering Patterson's guard duties tomorrow. He is sick again. First is at 2400, check the chart for rotation. 
William P. Ford. Again, this is the third time this week. None of us like it down here. Maybe Patterson should buck up. Just get on it. No name says ghost rats. All oh, right, I forgot it's a ghost ship. So of course, ghost rats makes perfect sense. It's been 80 years says Wipeout Films. Oh, has it been? I haven't even. I don't even know. It says present day. So if it's 2019, yeah, 80 years. All right. Olson, you're in port, you see. Okay, all of you, into the room. That still has fuel. Of course it does. What the hell is this fucking place? Dude, even those meatheads seem spooked. You think this ship is the Manchurian gold? We are in the vicinity of those coordinates. We can't just sit around. We need a plan. We're not exactly in the best position to be making any moves. The second they let their guard down, we gotta take advantage of it and get off the ship. Yeah, man. This whole rust bucket's one tetanus shot from the bottom of the ocean. We already tried to escape. Didn't exactly work out. We gotta get back to the boat and find Brad. What happened to him? No idea. They swiped our distributor cap. Gonna be difficult to get anywhere without it. So can't we just like hotwire or something? You cannot hotwire distributor cap. Okay, <laughs> these assholes knew exactly what they were doing. While those guys are out panning for Manchurian gold or whatever they think they're gonna find on this floating coffin, we gotta take advantage and look around for a way out of here. Fliss, I just wanted to say that, um, I might have gotten things kind of wrong back there. Uh, excuse me? I may have kind of prematurely come to the conclusion that maybe, you know, you're working some kind of side deal with these guys or whatever. But I, I mean, obviously that's not true. They're being just as bad to you as they are to us. So, yeah. Allow me to translate. He's saying that he's sorry. Well, I, Hmm. Well, your apology is kinda accepted. <laughs> cool. 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 We're all good. Okay. Tilly gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Awesome. You guys have been so generous tonight. Way to go. Um, it looks like no one has claimed those memberships yet. <laughs> but as soon as I see those names fly by, we'll, uh, we'll read them out. Thank you so much, Tilly. All right, there's a piece of paper here. We're gonna what get happened a date. here? 1947. American overseas gangland Ling of... 1947. Archaeologists missing in Iraq. 24 British archaeologists have gone missing in the Zagros Mountains of Iraq. The Hodgson expedition so, arrived in the kingdom of September last year with the stated goal of unearthing the... Small print? Should we expect an itemized bill for all these uh, extras? Yeah. Kidnapping, 750 a year. Extra time, 350 an hour. Hmm. Listening to your stupid bickering? I'll get back to you on that one. It's not charging us for the damage to your boat. <sighs> well, well, well. Hey, look what I found over here. Fuck! Give me a minute. I'm gonna see if I can get it off. 
Painting. I wonder why this was ripped off. Scratched out. The label has been scratched out of the painting. What do you think this ship was? Well, clearly a military vessel. <sighs> Take a look. <laughs> and congratulations to Jesse Wills, Madison Fisher, J, uh, TJ Dubs, and uh, Novitano, who got Tilly's free memberships. Thank you so much, Tilly. No, 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 no. Alex, I'm really scared. Hi, baby doll. I miss you like crazy. Three months until my next leave and jumping into your arms. Three months. I've been on some shore leave with the guys, had a few beers, but don't worry, I'm keeping everything ready for you if you catch my drift. <laughs> How's work? <laughs> God, that's the worst way to say I've been faithful to your wife that I've ever read. I hope that boss of yours is leaving you alone. I know you can take care of yourself, but I feel helpless being so far away, and I want to keep you safe. I get a Great. lot of time... Of all the places I'm going to die on... A bonafide ghost ship. I get a lot of time to think while I'm guarding the cargo holds. It's dark and spooky down there. Some of the other guys have seen a figure roaming around, but I've always got you with me to keep me safe too. I'll be with you soon and get a job as a mechanic and we can get married and have two children. We'll be happy together forever. Love you so much, Miller X. Spectacles. Real, real creepy. Our powers combined. Maybe we can bend it open and get out of here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't know where a vent like this would go. Wherever it leads, it can't be worse than here. Want me to just smash through this wall? Oh, yeah, sure. Big man on campus. <laughs> Someone should create a distraction. Let me just hulk my way through this wall. One second, I need to respond to yet another text. Sorry about this, everybody. Crow Reaver became a bronze ox. Thank you so much, Crow Reaver. Right. This is gonna be loud. Wait, wait. Maybe we should try barricading the door instead. Well, this is gonna be loud too. I didn't think this through. I didn't think this through. Hey, hey. I'm pressing A with all my life! Okay, make the roll A! Come on, come on, come on! I thought that meant both of them hide. Come on, I would never say one of them hide. I didn't even know which person I was making a decision about. The thing just said hide. I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. We've got them pinned against the wall. The other two are through the hole. Let's both hide. But no, it's only one of them? Ugh. Quint uh, Quinnick says, I spent a week on an internal waterway 
uh, Waterways River Cruise Boat. Never wore a shoe the whole time. Best week's holiday I ever had. I may or may not have been sober for some of it. Well, at least somebody can get by walking around on a boat without shoes, without walking away with tetanus or something like that. Let's hope the same is true with these four people. Okay, so the captain is caught. Whoops. Are we safe now? Stay quiet. We need to keep going. No, fuck that. We have to go back for Fliss. I'm the reason she got snagged. No way. No heroics. We gotta get as far away from here as we can. <sighs> Shit. You're right. Oh, come on. You can't leave the captain behind. Hello, I saw a note. Let me see. There's, so there's something on the door. Oh, I it was a calendar on the door. Hello. Let's explore. Uh, frequently asked questions, all ship personnel, extra guard duty regulations. Due to the special security precautions on this mission, additional procedures must be adopted by soldiers on guard duty. Double guard duty on all doors and on all watches. No talking, no playing of games. No smoking, no alcohol, no gambling. Guard personnel found breaking any of these regulations will be met with the sternest of punishments up to and including court-martial. By order of Captain Ford, guys, nobody is allowed into 3A. Seriously, nobody. What is in 3A? Probably shouldn't go in there, huh, if we ever find it. Get this guy killed. I am so gonna get this guy killed. And then there's the mystery of the smelling socks and punching briefs. Just don't go digging in it. Don't don't dig in it. They just couldn't help themselves. Chris, boys, what's up? Did you see that? Did, did, did you see that? Christopher Estrada, a member for two months, says, Hey, Ox, would love to see more mod content, maybe with a non-lore-friendly warning. Uh, maybe I could always do more uh, mod content, but right now I'm focusing on lore. Speaking of lore, did you see the uh, ghost uh, nurse woman behind the door for a second there? Was that just me? Was that just me? Did I just think that up? Was that just my mind? Okay. I just want to know where the hell they all went. There should have been dozens of people on board. Hundreds. How could they all just vanish? And leave all of the stuff behind? Something doesn't add up. Have you seen the rats? They've been feasting for decades. Cargo hold two Where's out the of bounds. Where's you are here, Arrow? Cargo hold two is out of bounds. Okay. It was a lady in a pinup sailor outfit. Yeah, that's what I thought I saw. Hayden says I saw it. Okay, so I'm not going crazy. It was really brief. They were just straight up messing with me. <laughs> I think we have ghosts, guys. I think we have ghosts. 
Oh, great, we get to check every turlet. Checking the turlet? No. Checking the turlet? No. Checking the turlet? No. Checking this turlet? Yes! Dear Ellis, I'm finally coming home. This is it, darling. One last trip across the Pacific, and I'll be back to you and the girls. I can't wait to see your faces. Tell Nad and Nancy to get excited. They're gonna see Daddy real soon, and he's got gifts for you all. I'm sure glad to be back at sea. It's hotter than an Oklahoma summer out here on land, and there's no escape from it. I've been air... I've been all right because I got your letters to keep me going. They censor them, which is probably for the best, because sometimes the others steal them to read, and I don't like them reading our letters. I know really creeps me out. He keeps telling me there's a little boy on board, and it sounds like Ted. I know he's just messing with me. There ain't no way we got a stowaway. Our ops guys are far too slick now. The war is over. I bet they'll edit this bit out, but it shows what a place can do to a guy. I gotta go for now, honey. There's some commotion outside. That usually means I'm about to be real busy for a while. I'll write again soon. Robert XX. Oh, this is tragic. Spooky. And what's his response? Spooky? Come on. Oh, I just read this heartfelt letter from a sailor to his wife, and I know that he's dead now. Oh, spooky. Come on, Connor. God, I wonder if Fliss is okay. She's a tough cookie. What are they doing to her? Jay, you're gonna drive yourself crazy. Just hope for the best, okay? You hear that? This place is fucking massive. Okay, did I miss something? Yeah, I missed something back here. That's a dead end. All right. The Raging Krogan says, Hey, Ox, would you play a game based on Mad Men? I mean, maybe. I'd have to see the trailer for it first. Oh, you're right. They're still barefoot. This is awful. It must hurt to walk on these, uh, these cage-like floors. Nothing? There we go. June 19th. I identified problem areas <clears throat> with structural brittleness and cracks in some sections of Cargo Hold 1. I instructed our shipwright to carry out the necessary welding repairs. I advised the captain to go easy, especially in bad weather. Any aggressive movement could cause the ship to break its back. June 20th. I responded to a complaint that some electronic equipment had been malfunctioning recently. I discovered growths of tin whiskers around some of the components. I cleaned and added lead to the solders, uh, which has stopped the equipment shorting out and should slow down the growth. June 21st, I conducted a thorough weekly engine room inspection of fuel, oil, and fluid, which showed lower levels of cylinder oil than expected. I have reminded staff in the engine room to be attentive and vigilant with their hourly checks and to alert an engineer if there is any loss of pressure. June 22nd, the ship was caught in a heavy electrical storm, which began shortly after midnight. The lightning strikes caused a lot of electrical arcing, traveling through hoisting cables aloft deck, which has left damage. Uh, the grease has boiled up and destroyed some of the cabling. 
I have received reports that the main problems caused by the storm are with electrical equipment at the moment. It's likely the tin whiskers haven't helped matters. <clears throat> Despite the rough sea, there have been no reports of any structural damage. However, I'll have to work through the night to make a full damage assessment. Uh... I guess that's it. Jonathan became a gold ox. Thank you, Jonathan. Crumpled up piece of paper. No, that's a rat skull. Thursday the 12th, the skipper has KO'd the booze for this whole doggone trip. There's nothing like being sober to make you realize just how quiet this ship is. There was a fight between those dumb schmucks Wilson and Anderson right after we sailed, but Ferris nipped that in the bud real quick, and it's been quiet as a church ever since. I got talking with a feller who happened to load up the ship. He told me they put a bunch of coffins on board, which isn't so weird, maybe. Uh, but he said there was some guy who made sure the coffins were all put in one of the holds just right. Real precise. Not the treatment you'd get if you were any old grunt. It got me thinking, who could it be in those boxes? Friday the 13th. Booze was a bum loss. Perez said he felt drunk after four cups, but I said he was talking baloney. It was like ditch water. Perez said they made some hooch from some supplies they lifted. Meeting up later down on six to check it out. Saturday the 14th. Just heard one of the guys here snuck a, a look at those boxes. Gonna go find him and see what he saw. Maybe he could even help me get to, uh, get in to take a look at it. It's all set. He reckons he can sneak me in. We're gonna take a look tonight. Saturday, or no, Sunday the 15th. It's all off. The guy who was going to help me get in the hold has been signed off sick. Doc Finley thinks he's some kind of flake which might be true, but Miller says it's something else. Something weird about that place. Miller's kind of a twitcher. Wouldn't want to be caught in a pinch with him, that's for sure. Tuesday the 17th, Perez said that the boys made more hooch. Too bummed out to sneak, any and, try, uh, sneak and try some, but what else is there to do? News, new batch is worse than the last one. Never listening to any damn fool idea from Perez ever again. Saturday the 21st, last night I was on duty with uh, Volovitz, and doggone it, if he didn't creep me out, he got spooked and started babbling about some sergeant called Jones that went missing in action in the jungle. Reckoned that Jones and his crew were the ones in the boxes, traveling home just like us saps. I sneaked a look and Jesus, there it was, just like the guy in the port had said. All laid out, real nice, old glory over each one. If it's Jones in there, they've done him proud. Good old Uncle Sam wouldn't leave any of us out here. Out there, he'd make sure we all come. I guess we can only read two pages. So one potential death is that Davies, or whatever his name is, bashes his head into a window. Can I avoid that? <coughs> I 
We'll see. Turn off the light. Turn off the light. We're gonna get killed. Our son. Think it's safe to grab it? We gotta be careful. Could be a trap. Ya yeah, quelqu'un? Really, such a good idea, huh? Yeah, man, not worth it. Oh uh, no, I mean, I was reluctant, but I guess I guess we just saved ourselves, huh? Okay, qui est là? Je vous ai entendu. Qui est là Arrête de crier, j'essaie d'entendre ce qui se passe. Je crie pas. Ta gueule. Je veux savoir où sont les autres. that he dies against? Maybe I should open it. Can I open it? According to the premonition, it was a closed door that he died against. Can we open it? No. Awkward to control. What's with the makeshift chapel? Oh, good God. Why do I need to see this now? Internal memo, memo to all crew. Area 7C has been converted into a temporary chapel for the rest of the duration of the voyage. I mean, that's a bit redundant. But all crew are required to be silent and respectful when passing near Section 7C. Signed, Corporal Moore, Chaplain. Copy to QMAMS. Ship! It's become self-aware! It's coming to get us!
thought I saw a passage to the right over here. No. I had to check it. Wait a minute. We've been here before. Uh, I don't oh. think so. Oh, I swear we've been here before, Alex. Have you been leading us in circles? Come on, guys. We gotta keep moving. We have not been here before. Why does she think we have? Oh, what's in the pot? It's... Soup du jour, mademoiselle? As if you know your way around a kitchen. Please, relax. Just messing around. Looked like tentacles in there. Hey. Hey, easy with that. We shouldn't be screwing around right now. Nice blade. Could make a nice severance package for my assailants if you catch my drift. We might need it. I guess you never know. We might have to use it. Achievement unlocked. Big man on campus. God. Have I made the right decision? Never know. Beef casserole. Hey, doesn't look like beef casserole. According to this, today is beef casserole. Mm, yummy. It's when? as if everything just ground to a halt on this one day. The whole ship just stopped functioning. On Sunday, they got breakfast, which was crispy bacon and scrambled eggs, but they missed dinner. Wednesday, boiled eggs, broiled halibut with potatoes and fresh lima beans. Thursday, home fried potatoes, roast beef with fresh vegetables. Friday, navy baked beans with salt pork, cold roast beef with salad and spiced beets. Saturday, creamed whipped, uh, whipped beef on cornbread. Creamed whipped beef? Is that such a thing? Oh, can you whip beef? Oh. Roast lamb with new potatoes and carrots. Sunday, crisp bacon and scrambled eggs. Grilled bacon and hashed browned potatoes. Uh, beef casserole. Okay, now it's getting kind of confusing. All right. Whipped beef. Ugh. It's gonna be a rat. <laughs> Jesus. Oh! Called it! Alex? What is it? Ugh. See for yourself. Ugh. Game Guy says, A knife! Considering the quality of the journals and papers you found, I'm surprised no one has found or thought to look for working guns on a military ship, no less. Yeah, I'm surprised too. All right, now what is this place? Mess hall. I'm thinking we gotta go through here. And I'm thinking I'm gonna look at this picture on the wall. I should have left the knife. 
I should have left the knife. No. Okay, well I can't let I can't let the enemies I can't get I can't let, let the pirates get it. Wait. This isn't right. I know I saw something. It was moving in the shadows. Rats. Probably just rats. That's all it was. Don't fucking laugh at me! She saw the child. All right, we've been here before. I'm sure of it. We're going around in circles. Calm. What do you want to do, turn around? We've seen all this before. Cool it, Jay. We don't have a lot of options. It's gotta be this way. Okay, no. This isn't working for me. What? <laughs> we found Gross them. caskets and crappy chapels. Not my scene, you know? You're right. It's gross and it's crappy. We gotta get out of here too sweet. And we gotta find Fliss. Toot sweet. Okay, so can we just get the fuck out then? What does toot sweet mean? Is that like French for very quickly? What is this? This is 7A is what this is. Hey, we got a name on this guy. Ryan what are Carter. they even doing here? I don't think stuck on a ghost ship for all eternity sounds like a good plan A. Who cares where they're from or where they're going? They're dead and we're not, so let's keep it that way. Oh, no, this is a bad idea. Well, I'm gonna do it. Human? What is the deal with this place? That is some bad mojo, dude. Okay, leave. <laughs> now! Leave, leave, leave! Oh man, that is some bad mojo. Look at that skeleton. I'm feeling the bad mojos there. Look at this one. Like for a kid or something. I don't want to know. Let's get out of here. Yes! Maybe that's little baby Dracula. Right there, and those are his parents, and they're lying in the dirt from their native country. And then they all jump on Conrad and eat off his face. <laughs> the end. Got some serious locks in these caskets. This one's chained in. Why would they be chained and locked? <laughs> well, that's one way to end a relationship. Or to keep something alive inside. There's the chapel. What's the matter? Shh. Jump scare. Oh! <laughs> what is it? Look! What? Seriously? Are you trying to freak me out? Huh? Of Can course it's a bad. What was the face, man? What was that? Really? Dude. Ugh. I mean, they're really smart. They knew they were throwing rats at us right, left, and center. Every jump scare was a rat to the point where I'm sitting there like, yeah, okay, this is going to be a rat. And then this next one, we pull open the curtain. Of course, it's a rat. But then, ghoulish face. <sighs> Come on. Roger that. We gotta get Fliss. No time to lose. <gasps> what the hell is making that sound? Uh, what sound? Oh. Why so spick and span? 
Are those mummies? What? Fuck! <laughs> This is no time to be <laughs> fucking around. I'm serious. I can't take it. Hey, man. How come you're not rotted? <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Don't touch it. Why did you touch it? <laughs> Good question. Why are we here? Let's touch it again. Touch it, touch. Touch, 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 touch. No, can't touch it again. God, this game. <sighs> Let's give them an option to touch the body, because of course that's what a normal person would do. Just touching corpses for fun. God. All right, hold on, I gotta explore over here. That's another way out. She was going that way, I'm going this way. Any medicine we find in here is gonna be old. Way out of date. Aspirin. Conrad, take a couple of these. Hey, where do you go? Uh, looking for a second opinion? Is that a doctor joke? Come on. All right, let's get out of here. This one is just a bit too much. All right, wait, no, let's go over here first. Nope, we can't. All right, let's get out of here. Where the hell is Conrad? Conrad? Maybe just get in some air. Conrad! Oh, look, another body. Let's touch it. Here we go, everybody. Gas mask off? No? Scalpel? Incision? No? Oh, look at the dude in the corner. Oh, he's gonna jump up out at me. He's gonna jump out at me. What the hell? Looks like he died of fright. You can't see that. A corpse whose face has frozen in an expression of terror. It looks almost as if they have been frightened to death. Okay, so this guy had appendicitis, which is pretty routine, and then... Then he died of a massive heart attack, which is not routine at all. Hashtag nope, nope. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> Hashtag no. Nope. Connie? Connie! Here we go. Where is Conrad? Quick time event head. time. Connie! Yeah, let's shout. Shh, shh, quiet. I can shout if I want. Connie! Where the hell did he go? All right, I gotta look at my clock here. It's almost time to end the program. Tell me where we are going, damn it! Got about 20 minutes left. Hey! Huh? Back off! 
Leave that alone. You don't even know what you're doing. You just do whatever he tells you, don't you? Somebody pick up the wrench that we left behind? Megan? Look at this. Madan. NG Madan. Man of Madan. NG Madan bearing updated. Fliss found a captain's hat with the name ending NG and then Madan after it. What was that noise? What are you talking about? I don't want to hear anything from you. Olsen! <laughs> Come on, what's next? Oh, Please, you don't have to do this. Got a loot. Loot, loot, loot. Come on. Oh, come on, I'm just exploring. still right here with us. I mean, you die on a ship, your ghost stays on the ship. Come on. You have no idea what you're talking about. Let's get closer, shall we? Oh yeah, let's take a look at this guy. Huh. Where did all your friends go? I don't know what the fuck this is all about. But we gotta keep moving and find Olsen. Now! Secret found a terrified looking corpse. It looks as though they were cowering away from something when they died. Olsen? Merde! Qu'est-ce que tu fais? I'm still trying to figure figure out that pinup nurse that just flashed on the screen for a brief moment. It seems out of place. Oh no! Oh, God. oh me and my big mouth. <laughs> Jeez. Oh come on! I want to see what the premonition is. Dude's freaking out! Calm, calm down, dude!
the hell? Uh, uh, let's go get the ship. Or go in there, fine, that's, we can do that. Edward J says, not sure if you knew, but this game is based off of the real-life SS Urang Madan in World War II, said to be a real ghost ship. So this is based on a true story. That's exactly what I wanted to hear tonight. Thank you, Edward. That makes this so much better for me. Try again. There we go. Hello? Is anyone there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you see that? Oh, that was great. <laughs> oh, God. Let's see it again. Oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Come on, really? Oh, one more time, just for good measure. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Okay. can't be a good sign. Drop down. Well, okay. Sure. <sighs> a distributor cap? Now. Guard duty, location hold 3A, date May 2 something. Duty officer Carter Watts, times, and then watch stander, and then sign. Reed, Reed, Miller, Miller, Davis, Davis, Paris, Paris, Griffin, Griffin, Patterson, crossed out O'Neill, O'Neill. Strictly no unauthorized entry to guarded areas. Do not leave post until you are relieved by oncoming watch stander. God. Oh, Lord. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's go this way first.
bring up to him. Jesus, what happened down here? Let's touch another body and find out. Oh, come on, fix the camera. Charles T. Perez, Rex Perez. Well, we found Perez. himself B-Boy. Holy shit. And we're back here. Great. Come on, B-Boy. Also is barefoot. <laughs> so if I hadn't touched that Hello? clipboard, he would have been is able there? to read it. This can't be good. <laughs> no, this is just peachy, man. Be the bee. Bee man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, those hanging feet. Just love those hanging feet. They're gonna slither up into the ceiling, aren't they? Her bracelet. This is Julia's. They were here. Okay. They were here. But that way's locked. Nope. Of course it is. Watch the legs. Watch the legs. Here they go. They're going to slither up. Oh, man. I didn't call it. Oh.
Get going there. On a shamrock? U.S. General Infantry, 14th Division. Turn your heads. Do not turn your heads. Hello? Oh, hell. Oh, great. Perfect. Wonderful. Just keep going, why don't we? What, we already know that the, all, of the, all of the lockers are filled with corpses. Let's just keep going, why not? Oh, look at that, what's this? <laughs> Fuck this place. <laughs> An old man mask, <laughs> just falls down. Oh, man. Oh, I am sweating buckets. <laughs> this is not even right. <laughs> Why is it happening to poor Brad? This, like, they doled it out slowly to all of the rest of them. Yeah, let's open it. Come on, find out what's inside. Oh, the algae on the crapper. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> poor Brad. They dole it out slowly to everyone else, but Brad here. This is where he dies unless I'm very careful. he calls himself B-Boy. I mean, that's something your older brother might give you a nickname of B-Boy, but to call yourself that, it's just humiliating. Is that a picture on the wall? No?
Equipment requisition form, quantity description, one respirator, one filter, budgeted expenditure, yes, proposed by Private Gordon Young, rejected. If rejected, reason for rejected rejection, Private Young already has a gas mask signed out. So mustard gas? <clears throat> is that through here? Is that what leaked mustard gas? Need something to help me get up there. It's a box. Master store. Tom, it's your ass if this gets out. See that it doesn't. Internal memorandum to all field officers. Ensure that the locks are affixed to caskets as soon as they have been located at the water purification project facility. The caskets are classified. They must remain locked and under guard at all times. No personnel in your unit should have access. CW5 Walter Bishop. Right, B-Boy, let's climb that box. Interesting. Premonition unlocked. Greg Williams says, Hey Ox, what's light and blue? The color light blue. I'm here all night. Tip your waitress and love your nervous laugh. Play on good, sir. Thank you, Greg Williams. B-Boy. Who's that? Who's there? Get away! Down? How about no? Oh, a hanging body. Yeah, that's skeletons. That skeletons. Skeletons? Where's this? Some sort of altercation. Yeah. 
Internal memorandum to First Officer Fisher. Sir, you ask to be kept informed of the radio situation. We attempted outgoing messages at the following times with no response. 0110 hours, 0120, 0130, 0140, 0150. We were able to pick up indirect messaging traffic until 0140 hours. However, there has been no further incoming messages track at, th at all since that time. It is possible that our radio equipment is faulty. I am investigating, I am investigation and expect to be able to report back to you by 0300 hours, Private Cooper. Bearing updated. We got the wrench. Hey, dude. Smile. You're not supposed to be out here. I'm not supposed to see this. Guess I gotta drop down, because this does the full loop. Right, let's drop down. Alex? Brilliant idea. Julia? Yeah, they're in there. Oh, fuck no. Did you see our curator guy was there for a brief moment? Did you, uh, this is like the second or third time I've seen our curator in, this, in the background a little bit during one of these action sequences. I'm over time now. I was really kind of hoping to power through this section to get to the next curator moment. Mitchell says, hey, Oxron, I'm enjoying your Fallout 4 story. Keep up the great work, and I'm going to enjoy watching you play this game. Thank you, Mitchell. Hey, are you sure we're going to work over here? He's seen the shade of Brad, does that mean- I missed one, but I got one, and I guess that was enough. What in God's name is this?
Ouais. Well. <laughs> Guys, I... Uh, <clears throat> I got to end it here. I'm way over time now. And uh, I thought that by sh uh, surely by now they would have sent me back to the curator, but no, not at all. So we're uh, in the ballroom and I'm going to have to end it here. Mitchell says, uh, oh no, I read Mitchell's. <laughs> Thank you so much. So because we saw the zombified body of Brad, does that mean he's dead or was that just a hallucination? We also saw his ghost walking around and he recently fell to the ground. So is he, is he a goner? Somehow I survived with Triss I guess uh, I missed a couple of, um, of quick time events there, but I also got a couple. So maybe it was just good enough. Anyway, uh, Nate on Facebook with a donation of stars says, love being able to catch the live show. Any chance on a sequel to the tale of Chloron Hastings? Thank you, Nate. Um, I had a sequel in mind, but, uh, you know, that was 20 years ago and I haven't had a chance to sit down and write a new book in all that time. So I don't know if I'll ever get get around to doing a sequel, but maybe someday. Who knows? Anyway, thanks, everybody, for coming to tonight's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings. We should all get some sleep because we're going to be awake bright and early tomorrow morning for some shadow of the Tomb Raider. I hope to see each and every one of you then. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for coming. Bye bye now.